Today, we are going to create a simple node staking application using Node.js, Express, MongoDB, and for the templating, we'll use EJS and Bootstrap. So this is what we're going to be building today, starting with this beautiful landing page, and then we're going to move on to building a basic about page. And once we're done with those two pages, we're going to move on to the sign in page, which is using Google authentication. So it's going to ask me for my email and password. And once I log in, this will present me with the first screen. So if you click on create new node, inside here you can add the title and the body of now i've already created a bunch of nodes so i'm going to show you how they look by going to the dashboard we have the search bar at the top we have the logout we also have the name coming from the google account we can create a new node and at the end here we also have a fully working pagination and if you wish to update a node you can click on one you can put for example v1 update if you wish to delete a node you can click on it then you can click on the delete button here the lead node this node will be gone from our dashboard and it will be deleted we can also search for nodes for example let's search for node and press enter and here we're going to be presented with the search results and if i click on any of those for example how to use .env and this will present us with the node which we can update and so on if this is something that you're interested in building stick around give this video a like and a comment below and now let's get started Hello and welcome everybody and let's get started. If you haven't already got Node.js installed, make sure that you go to Node.js.org and download the latest version. The installation is fairly simple. All you need to do is pretty much follow the instructions and press next, next, next. Once you do that, you can check your version of Node.js by opening the terminal command line or PowerShell. On Windows, I can do right click and then open terminal. And then inside here, I can just do, let me zoom in a little bit. You'll be able to do node dash v and this will give you the current version that you have let me close this as well i've already created a project folder called node.js dash node and inside here is where we're going to be creating the new project and the first thing that we need to do is to initialize a new project in order to do this on windows i can do left shift right click and open the powershell or the terminal inside here and essentially what this is going to do it's simply going to cd to the folder that I'm currently in, the node.js-nodes folder. Of course, you can use the cd command and to go forward to a folder or backwards, and you can use the ls command to list the files that are in your current folder. So if you're on Mac or Linux, make sure that you do that and make sure that you are in your project folder. Now, in order to initialize a new project, we can do npm init, dash y and this is going to skip all of the questions and just create the package.json file for us inside our project folder now the next thing that we need to do is install the dependencies that we need i'm going to install all of the dependencies and then i'm going to explain them as we use them inside the project so let's start by npm i for install and then we can start listing all of the dependencies so connect mongo is the first one we have dot env, we have ejs, we have express, we have express ejs layouts, we have express sessions, session sorry, and we have method, override, we have mongoose, we have passport, we have passport google zero or twenty. And that's it. If you press enter, this should take a couple of seconds to install. And the next thing that we need to do is install one development dependency, which is called Nodemon. So to install Nodemon, we can do npm i will install and then Nodemon and then dash dash save dash dev like so. And this will install Nodemon as a development dependency. And essentially, Nodemon will just restart the server every time we make a change in our project so we don't have to do it manually. Okay, now that we've created our project, if you go back to the folder, you should see node underscore modules. You should see package.json file. You should see package-log.json file, uh, which means that we're good to go to start creating our project. Now, I'm going to open this project in Visual Studio Code. So in the 
terminal here I can do code dot and I believe that this works on Linux and Mac and this will open the project inside Visual Studio Code here you will see the project on the left side the project folder and I've zoomed in quite a lot so everybody can see well now before we begin one thing that I want to make sure that we create right now is a git ignore file so I'm going to create a new file and this file is going to be called dot git ignore and essentially what I want to achieve here is that if you decide to upload your project on github unless you do the git ignore and you ignore some of the files it will upload absolutely everything this could mean that you might upload your passwords and secure keys so I want to avoid that the file that we want to avoid uploading is going to be the .env file which we're going to create later on in this tutorial and also I want to avoid uploading the node modules just because there are a lot of files and you don't need to upload them so let's do node underscore modules like so and save we're good to go so now if you commit your changes to github they won't upload say this and close and let's open the package.json file the first thing that i'm going to do on the main i'm just going to change this to app.js because this is what we're going to be calling for application file app.js and then under scripts just below the test i'm going to put a comma here and i'm going to create another script called start and this script is going to start or application with nodemon so nodemon and the application is going to be called app.js which we'll create in a second if you scroll down a little bit further you'll see some of the dependencies that we just installed and you'll see the versioning of them as of now note that the versions might change in future which means that they might change the way they work slightly but usually if something changes you should get a nice warning in the console and it will tell you what you need to update change in order to make it work the other alternative is to actually install exactly the same dependencies as me and follow along if you wish to but i would advise you to just use the latest and fix things as they as they break i guess and the last thing that we're going to have a look at is the development dependency which is no more here it's installed and we're using it here in the start which is great let's save this and let's close it let's open the explorer and let's start creating our project so to start with i'm going to create our app.js file and i'm only going to start with the packages that we need as of now and then later on we'll build the, the project as it makes sense so the first thing that i'm going to do straight away is i'm going to create our env file which is going to contain our secure keys and passwords and then in order to require this we can do require let me close this and let's do require and then you say here we require dot env like so and then we do dot config that's it and then for the rest we need to require express just so we can create an express server const express equals require and then we require express like so we need to require express layouts equals require and this is going to be express ejs layouts and this is essentially going to help us create different layouts for a website that we can reuse through uh, many pages so we don't have to uh, copy and paste pages all the time and now in order to create a new express application we can do const app equals express and we do the method of express here which if we hover over you'll see that it creates an express application the express function is a top level function exported by the express module and we need to give it a port number so const port this is going to be the port that our application is going to be running on so port 5000 as default but if we publish this and there are environment variables that our application can use we can do process dot env dot port so this is pretty useful when you publish your project we need to add two middlewares in here so app.use the first one is express.url encoded and then inside here we need to put extended to true and the second one is going to be .app.use 
express dot json like so and essentially those two things are going to help us pass data through forms and pages for example i'm going to give you a very simple example if we create a form that submits some sort of data this is going to help us pass the data from page to page and maybe submit it to a database the next thing that i'm going to create right now is the static files so i'm going to put a comment here static files and this is going to be another middleware called app.use express dot static and then we put the the folder that we want to be static so in this case i'm going to call it public and this is going to make it very easy for us to link files inside or html documents or ejs documents in this case so we will be able to link or images styles and javascript very easily straight from the public folder and i'm going to show you this uh, very shortly how this works so we will have to create this folder we also need to set the templating engine i'm going to do it here templating engine and i'm going to do app.use and we are using express layout as we added it above then we need to set the default layout app.u app.set layout and then the layout that i'm going to set as default is going to be called slash layouts main and i'm going to create this in a second as well and explain it and then we're going to do app.set and then inside here we're going to set the view engine to be ejs in this case like so and the last thing that we need to do is potentially create a very basic uh, route so let's create something like app.get and then the route inside here is going to be just slash for home page and then we're going to do a function this function is going to have a request and a response and then inside curly brackets here we're going to do res.render and then we can render the home page which is going to be index in this case and i'm going to create this now in a second as well and then the last thing that we need to do is app.listen and then we just need to put the port which is coming from here the port 5000 in this case comma and this is going to be a narrow function like so and then inside curly brackets we can do console log and then we can console log inside slanted single quote so we can use template literals app listening port and then with a dollar sign and curly brackets we can pass the port constant like so and save now we definitely need to create our layout in order for this to work and we need to create our first page so in order to do this let's open the explorer and let's build our layout so we need to create a new folder and this folder is going to be called views and inside the views is where we're going to store our layouts and our main layout as i said inside here is going to be called main dot ejs and also we're going to be storing all pages in here so this is layout but i want to store pages inside the views so what i'm going to do is create our home page which is going to be called index dot ejs so for this i'm just going to say h1 load and then save this now let's jump inside our main layout and i'm going to show you how this works so first of all we need to create a very basic html file so in this case i'm going to do html and select the html5 and let's do the very basic for now just so we can see whether our app is working and inside here what i'm going to do is the less sign percent and then i'm going to do percentage and this is going to open and close it for me but i also need to put dash and i need to put body so essentially this creates a reusable template and all of our pages are going to be inserted in here the content of the pages so this is our main layout and then the page for example the home page will be inserted in here and we should get hello world inserted in here essentially so if we save this save pretty much everything and now let's run our application in order to do this i can jump back into powershell make sure that you are in your project folder i'm going to clear everything and then i'm going to do npm start and this should start the application with nodemon as you can see we have a fir or first error 
and this is because I spelled extended true wrong. So I'm gonna go to app.js and put where is it? Extended true. Save this and then let's go back. And as you can see, we're getting app.listening on port 5000. If I stop this with control and X, terminate it and then press Y. So this will stop it, clear it once again. And now let's do npm start so you can see. But as you can see now, we have nodemon running the application. So starting node app.js and then app is listening on port 5000, which is great. This means that we can actually visit our application in the browser now. So I'm going to open the browser and I'm going to type localhost of 5000 in here. And as you can see, we're getting hello world. If I was to inspect the code of this, so control a new or command a new for Mac, and then you should be able to see that we get the HTML that we've written in our layout. And then inside here is where it's rendered the actual homepage. So if I was to change the homepage to hello world, one, two, three, save it, and I will refresh this page, you'll see that it renders the page in here which is great. So this is pretty much reusable. Let me zoom out. And the next thing that we can have a look at straight away is let's set up this layout for success, I guess, and then we'll continue. For the main layout, what we can do, first of all, for the title, I want this to be replaced dynamically. So depending on what page we are on, I want to be able to pass some data and this to update. In order to do this, we can do very similar thing like here. So I'm going to open and close EJS like so. And then inside here, I'm going to create a locals dot title. So we'll create an object which is called locals and inside this object, there will be a title with some data. I'm going to do exactly the same for the description of the website. So we can do meta and then this is going to be name equals description. And then we can do content and then inside here is where we can copy this, paste it, and then we can do locals.description. And we should be good to go. Now we need to close this as well, like so. And yeah, we're good to go now. Now, if you wanted to pass the, the data inside here, we can go back to app.js and here where we have our route, we can simply do const locals equals and then inside curly brackets we can put the title and then the title for this can be something like node.js nodes and then we can put comma and then we can put the description and then the description is going to be free node.js nodes app and in order to pass this inside and render it so we can grab this locals, put comma inside here, and then paste it. So now if we go back to our website and look at the document here, the document name, if I refresh, you should see that we're getting Node.js nodes. And if I do control and new, zoom in, you'll see that we're getting the title here and we're getting the description that we just added. So far, so good. Everything is working well, but obviously as we build our application, we're going to have a lot of routes and you could store them all in your app.js file, but it's going to get a very, very long file and it could get very messy, which leads me to the next point of this tutorial where we're going to create routes and we're going to create controllers. So this is going to basically split up a code in different sections and hopefully it will be a little bit easier to work with. So in order to do this, let me close pretty much everything for now. I'll leave the app.js open. But if I go to the Explorer, let's create a new folder called server. And inside this folder, we're going to have two more folders. So controllers. And I'm going to have another folder called routes. So for the routes, for the main routes, such as the home page, about page, FAQ, whatever you wish to create, I'm going to call it index.js. And then for the controller, maybe we can call it main controller. So let's do main controller JS. Perfect. So there are a couple of things that we need to do. 
first of all we need to move the code from app.js this code here i'm gonna grab it and we need to put all route in here and we need to change how this works so i'm still going to require the route in here so the applications know where they are but we're going to do it slightly differently so in this case i'm going to do app.use and then inside here i'm going to do slash which is going to hit the main route of our website and then i'm going to do require and then I, inside here i'm going to require dot slash server and then we're going to require the routes and then i'm going to require the index route which is the main route which means that we can now store all routes inside the routes file here and that should work so if i save this for now that should be absolutely fine let me close them let's go to the index route so inside routes index and since we are going to be uh, creating a router inside here we do need to bring express so i'm going to do const express equals require and then inside here we require express just like we done in the app.js file and then we do need to bring the router from express so const router equals express.router like so we need to bring the controller that we created the main controller so this is going to be const main controller equals require and then we require the controller which is under dot dot so we're going backwards controllers and then main controller like so and we close now a very important thing that you need to do straight away in here is to export the router so don't forget that module dot export equals router so that's very important and inside here is where we can start listing for routes. So for this, I'm going to grab a comment and I'm going to say app routes. So the first route that we're going to do is going to be the homepage. So essentially what we've done in the app.js, but we're moving it here and we're moving the functionality inside the main controller. So the way this is going to be working is going to be router dot get, because this is a get method and then and I'm going to put which controller do we want to use. So we're going to be using the main controller. And then we need to create a function that we want to run. For example, I can just put this one as homepage. You can name it whatever you like. And now we need to create this inside our main controller. So if you jump to server controllers main controller. Inside here, what we can do is maybe put a little bit of a comment, get homepage. And inside here we can do export dot homepage as this is what we called it and then this is going to be an asynchronous function and then inside here we're going to have the request and the response and then like so we create the function and then we can repeat exactly the same thing that we had in the app.js file so i'm i'm going to copy and paste in here so we have the const locals title of node.js notes description free node.js notes app like so and then if i move down we can do the res.render and then we render the index page and then we pass the logos inside here like so so essentially we're rendering this page here in views index and this index page has a layout of main how this makes sense and now if we save this save the route make sure that you have the app.use uh, route in here as well save it everything is looking good hopefully if we go back to our command line or terminal you shouldn't see any errors and if i was to refresh you will see that the application is still working and we're still getting hello world from here so i'm going to remove that and save refresh and everything is working just like before but the project is much more organized just like that we can create more pages so i can just show you one super quickly so for example if we go to the route index.js we have the homepage router but if you want to create another one we can just do alt shift and down this is going to create another it's going to duplicate the line from the top i can just call this one about and then this is going to be called about as well and now we have a new router for the about page but we also need to create it inside the controller. So 
So main controller here, I can literally pretty much copy this whole code here and copy that whole thing. And I can just say get about. This is going to be exports about. And we can do title, I don't know, Node.js about about dash node.js nodes and then i'm just going to leave the description as it is and instead of rendering the index this time we're going to render an about page which i can create inside the views so for example we can literally just create a new file about.ejs and just put an h1 about save this let's close everything else and now we should have two routes if we go back to the website Obviously, we don't have any links yet, but what you can do is put slash about, and then this will lead you to the about router. And as you can see, it's working. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's have a look at making our website look a little bit better. And for this, I'm going to be using Bootstrap. So, first of all, go to getbootstrap.com. And as of now, we are on version 5.2. And in order to get Bootstrap, all you need to do is click here, read the doc, and they give you a very clear instructions of how you can use this. It's important to have the scale for mobile, for the mobile responsive behavior. And we have the title in here. And if you scroll down a little bit more, we have the Bootstrap CSS link inside here, which we can grab. And I can paste this into our main layout, which is under views, layout, and main. So under that, so inside the head element, somewhere around here, we can do the bootstrap file and I can do view for wrap. So you can see absolutely everything. So we have the CSS from bootstrap and also just in case for later use, I'm going to grab the scripts from bootstrap. So I'm going to grab this and this needs to be pasted just above the body here. So I can just paste it around here and that should do the job. Now, if you go back to the website and, and if you look at the font, hopefully we should see that change when I refresh. So here we go. So this means that Bootstrap is already working from the CDN that we just added. Now, the next thing that I wanted to show you is that we can also add custom styles, just maybe above here. Let's say that we want to add a custom style. So I'm going to put link CSS. And then inside here, we put the file that we want. For example, I can call it main.css. And this is going to be living in a CSS folder that I'm going to create right now. So slash CSS slash main.css. And this is what the public in app.js is doing. So now where I have the public here. So now I can create a new folder. First of all, let me create it outside everything else. This is going to be called public. And inside this public folder is where I can create the CSS folder. I can create an images folder. I can create JavaScript folder and so on. And I can access it from my main layout, for example, just by putting slash CSS. I don't have to put public CSS and so on. I can just put slash CSS main.css and that should work. And to prove you that this works, we can create a new file in here inside the CSS folder called main.css. And let's just change the body color of our website. So body, and I'm just going to put background color and let's just put this aqua. Okay, save this. And actually, if we go back to the main.ejs, uh, let's move this underneath the bootstrap link just so we can override styles as we need to. Otherwise, the background might not work in this case. So save this. Let's go back. And if you refresh now, you should see the background color changing, which means that our main.css file is working and that's great. Just as we're here, I'm going to check some of the images that I have for this tutorial. So I'm going to go inside here, reveal in file explorer. So I'm going to paste the images that we're going to be using like so, and then we can style our homepage. Now let's close everything. Let's remove the body background here. Let's close everything. Let's close the app.js and let's close the index.js in here. And let's just focus on this for a second. Now we have our main layout in here. Everything is working well, but also I want to separate the some of the sections such as the footer and the header so they can be reusable throughout or layout. And if I change it on one place, they'll change everywhere. Essentially, you don't even need to do this, 
but uh, it, will, it might be nice to have and we'll see later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split some of the sections into partial. So inside, let me close everything here. So inside views where, so inside views, I'm going to create another folder called partials. And inside partials, I'm going to create two files. So the footer dot uh, EJS. And then I'm going to create another one called the header dot EJS. And inside here is where we're going to split the footer and the header. So I can put header just so we can see it works. And then I can put footer. So if you wish to include them in your main layout, it's fairly easy. We start EJS just like so. And then we put include. And inside here, we can do dot dot slash partials slash header EJS like so. And then we can do exactly the same for the footer. So I'm going to do it inside here and this is going to be footer instead. And just like this, if you go back to the website and if you refresh, we have the header and we have the footer. Of course, we need to style them and make them look nice. So let's start looking into styling our website a little bit. And before we do that, actually, I totally forgot to add the font. So now will be a good time to add them. If you head over to fonts.google.com and click on font, from here, you can select the fonts that you want. For example, I'm going to be using the poppins and I'm going to be using this unbonded font, which looks absolutely amazing. So if you click on it, you can select the font from here. As you can see, I've already selected this one and I've selected the bold font and it's added here on the right side for me. I've done exactly the same thing on poppins. I've selected the light and the bold, and then this is going to give me the link to the font. So I'm going to copy it, put it in our main layout here, maybe just around here. And if we put these on two lines, you'll be able to see that we're getting the font family of poppins with the weight here, and we're getting the, the other font family of unbonded and the weight in here, which is great. So save this, and here is how you can use them. Uh, they give you the CSS rules as well, which I'm going to write myself later on. So let me close this now that we have the font. Uh, if I refresh, nothing is going to happen, and we are good to go. Okay, if we go back, let's start by building the header and the footer, and then we'll do some of the styling and move on. So for the header, let's go and open that inside partials, uh, header.ejs. And for the header, there are two ways we can do this. If you go to, if you search for bootstrap headers, uh, you should be able to get uh, getbootstrap.com docs 5.0 example headers. And if you like something from here, what you can do is right click, inspect it, and then you can literally just copy the code from here. So you can do right click, edit HTML, and then you can just grab it and copy and paste it. Okay, I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to modify a little bit and walk you through it. So let's grab the whole container, edit, copy, and then I'm going to go back to the header here and paste it. So the first thing that I'm going to change from here is the container to be fluid because I want this to be full width instead of contained. And then for the header, I believe that I want to remove, let's have a look, the border bottom from here. And I'm going to toggle the world wrap. So we will wrap. And for the logo, I'm going to remove the SVG from here. And I'm going to put notes instead. And let's modify this a little bit more. Instead of te text dark, I'm going to change it to text primary. I'm going to change the text decoration to none. That's absolutely fine. And then I'm going to set the font to be font weight bold. And then I'm going to set the font size to be two to make it a little bigger. If I save this, let's go back to the website. You should see that we're getting a working header with a logo or links in here and some buttons. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the pricing and I'm going to just link the home page. So this is going to be slash. And then for the about page, which we've already created, I'm going to put about. I'm not going to bother with the other ones just because you've already got an example of about and a home page. So these are going to be exactly the same. You just create two new routes. And then for the buttons here at the end, I'm going to have the sign up button here. And then I'm going to have the sign in button here. 
and then that's pretty much it and instead of buttons these are going to be actual links so instead of buttons i'm going to put a href and then this is going to have the link of um fourth slash google and i'm going to explain this later when we create the actual authentication and we need to enter the link in here instead of a button so oops like that like that and then we need to do exactly the same for this one so i'm going to remove this put a href and then i'm going to put exactly the same link as the sign up and the login will be exactly the same and then last here i'm just going to put a to finish it so now if you go back if you refresh you see that i have sign up and sign in which is great and now we can do exactly the same thing for the footer so maybe if we change this to footer footers nope okay i'll search for bootstrap footers and then this is going to be in the getbootstrap.com docs 5.2 examples footers and the one that i'm going to use today is going to be the first one here actually so i'm going to right click inspect and then i'm going to grab the whole container here so edit html copy and then we're going to open the footer so partials footer.ejs and inside here we swap this instead of container i'm going to make this full screen by doing fluid and now i'm going to modify a few things let's have a look so border top is what i don't want uh for the actual logo here in the middle i don't actually even want this but let's let's just add it anyway if you have a nice logo maybe you can add it and this is going to be notes like so and i wonder whether to do the same thing as the header where we added let's have a look where we added the font bold like so and the text primary okay so inside here i'm going to do font bold font size 2 and instead of link dark uh primary or let's have a look whether this works so if i refresh um that's working well i mean it's a little bit bigger than i want maybe i can just remove this okay that's a little bit better so now that we have the footer let's change a few of the links so again i'm going to remove the pricing leave the links that you want and for the home page this is going to be just slash as usual and then this is going to be slash about and this should now work if we go to, to the website as we have the about route working we should be able to click on it and you'll see that we're going to the about page and if you click on the home you'll see that we're getting hello world and so on now let's do a tiny bit of styling it's not going to be much and then we can continue and we won't touch css after this anymore so what i'm going to do is let's close absolutely everything for now and let's concentrate on the main.css file which is under uh, which is under public css and then main.css to start with i'm going to create two variables root and then inside here they're going to be called background color and the first variable is going to be a bright yellow color so ffc 700 and then the second one is going to be a bootstrap primary like rgb and then this is going to be a well it says rgb but this is going to be a hex value now nine so one two two nine six c which is a dark blue color as you can see in here and now let's change some of the uh, fonts that we added and make our website look a little bit different and better i guess so body inside here we put the font family and the font family i'm going to be using poppins as the default and this is a sans serif font then we can change the background color to be or variable color from above so background color like so then we can change the color of our text to be the dark blue color we can then use the variable bootstrap primary rgb the font weight i want to change as well to be 300 and then i want to change the font size of the whole website to be 1.2 rem which is going to make it a little bit bigger than 16 pixels which is i believe the default and then the background color sorry the background image is going to be a neural and then inside here we can add the image of 
images and then I have a noisy image that is going to make our website look a little bit retro, I guess, and then save. Uh, let's have a look at the changes super quick. Refresh, as you can see, our website went yellow. Uh, the colors are starting to change. This one didn't change, but I can fix this later on. Now let's go back and continue. I also want to change all of the headings. So what I'm going to do super quickly is H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. And let's just change this to the font that I added earlier. So font family, and this is going to be unbonded. And then this is going to be cursive. So this is a really good font for headings. I really like it. And now font weight, I'm going to do of 800 as default. We go back. As you can see, this changed as well as this was an H1 tag, and that's great. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom fluid grid. So I don't want the default custom container or bootstrap because it's fairly small. It's going to be around here. I want to make it a little bit larger. And, and to do this, I'm going to create my own custom container. For this, let's do container. And then this is going to be called fluid and then maybe custom. Inside here, I'm just going to put the max width to be 1600 pixels, and that should do the job. So essentially now, if I go to the home page, so view index.ejs, I can wrap everything inside a div with a class name of a container, fluid, and then I can just do the container fluid custom. And now that should make the container look a lot bigger. We go back. As you can see, the container st stops around here and it's going to be somewhere around here, which makes it a little bit better. Let's jump back to the CSS and finish the rest. I also want to make the buttons a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is paste a comment in here and I'm going to change the buttons. So BTN to grab all of the buttons. And I'm going to do padding left of 1.6 rem. And I'm going to do the same for the padding right. And then I'm going to do border radius just to make it a little bit more interesting of two rem. This should make the buttons look a little bit different, as you can see, like pills, I guess. And then what I'm going to do is actually change the colors of those buttons. And an easy way of doing this is if you inspect the website and if you go to the button here, you should be able to see the uh, button primary here. So I'm going to grab the whole bit paste it inside here and I'm going to grab the outline button as well so I'm going to inspect it and here it is the outline one and what I'm going to do is super quickly just replace some of the colors so these are some of the default colors and what I'm going to do is for the background for example here I'm going to do a variable and I'm going to pick my variable from the top so this was a bootstrap primary and dash RGB. So I'm going to copy this and paste it everywhere it makes sense. So the, the border color I'm going to replace, the active background color I'm going to replace, the border color again one more time here, the active one, and the disabled background I'm going to replace, and I'm going to replace this one as well. For the hovers I'm going to do 0043A8. Zero, zero, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So 0, 0, 4, 3, 8, 8. And now we can do the outline one. So, so let's do the same thing here. We paste the variable. Paste the variable in here as well. The active background is going to be replaced as well. This one is going to be the border active is going to be replaced as well. The disabled color I'm going to replace as well. And the disabled border. Also, is there hover one? Yeah, the hover background I'm going to replace to 0043A8. And let's do the same thing 0043A8. Like so. Save it. And now, if you go back to the website, refresh, you'll be able to see that we've changed the buttons here. And the only thing that I need to change is this here. And one more thing, one more thing before we finish with the main styles and we start the home page, I'm going to change the colors of the pagination that we're going to build later on. So essentially I've done the same thing. I've grabbed the pagination class name and I've just changed the colors to the primary color 
that's pretty much it. You don't even have to do that. It'll still look good straight from Bootstrap. Now, if you save this all out, it's actually looking pretty decent. The only thing that I'm going to change is this super quickly. So inside the footer, where is it? Uh, views, partials, footer, and instead of, um, if we go view, we'll wrap, instead of primary link, maybe I can just change this to text primary. Let's have a look whether this works. And yeah, that changes it. So I'm pretty happy with this. So our main layout is done. And if I go to the about page now, you should see that this is also working, but I didn't wrap the about page inside a container. You could do this if you want to, uh, for every single page, you could essentially go to the main layout here. Uh, where is it? So layout main and wrap everything in a container, but this will, this might constrain you of doing a uh, full width section sometimes. So I would rather do it in the actual page. So like if we grab this and put it, wrap everything inside the about here, then I'd rather do it like this. And then that should work quite well. So if I go home about this is all working. Now for the home page, I was thinking of making something a little bit more interesting. It's only going to take a minute. So I was thinking of creating a custom layout for the home page and then we'll continue. We close absolutely everything. And this is actually a good exercise to make to show you how we can change the layout. So first of all, if I was to make a brand new layout for the home page, uh, maybe like a different one. So what I would do is let's copy the whole bit here because everything is going to be pretty much the same. So I'm going to copy this, go to layout and maybe just say uh, front page. EJ. And I'm going to paste it in here. Say front. Let's say front page layout just so we can see the difference. And in order to tell the front page to use the front page layout, we need to go to route, so server, route, index.js, and we need to find the controller, which is here. And we need to pass it inside here. And in order to do this, we because we're going to be passing more than one objects in here, I'm going to wrap everything inside curly brackets and we can start listing them in here. So we have locus, then we have a comma, and then we can have layout. And then for the layout, we can just list in here. So uh, dot dot slash views and then slash layout. And then I can put a uh, front page. Like so. And now this should take the front page layout from views, layout from page dot EJS. Let me save this and let's have a look whether this is going to work. Okay. Um, layout front page. Okay. I put dash instead of a slash here. So slash, and then let's go back and refresh. Views layouts from page. But to look up. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, so the mistake here is I've put front page instead of front page. So let's rename this to front. Okay, my mistake. And then that should hopefully work now. So let's refresh. And as you can see, we're getting the front page layout working now. Okay, let's style our home page super quickly and then we can move on. If I was to go to the front page layout and remove this, I'm not going to change too much in here, but I'm just going to give it a custom class home and I'm going to convert this to a D flex. So which, which means converting this body to a flex. And then I'm going to say this flex to act as a column. And I want hundred percent height as well on this. So if we save this, everything should look pretty much the same. And now we can use this class uh, only on the home page. So if I go to the main.css file here, I can actually use this class and style or homepage. Before we do this, let's jump into the actual home page and add some of the data that we need. So I'm going to close everything else and save this and concentrate on the home page. So we've already got the container fluid container fluid custom that I've added, but I want to add a little bit of it. So I'm going to do padding Y middle, which is top and bottom essentially of five. And that's on your medium screens. And then I'm going to do margin bottom of five always on all screens. And then inside here, I'm going to create main like so HTML element and inside the main. So inside here, I'm going to do row and then I'm going to do 
padding to the Y of middle five. So top and bottom one more time. Then we're going to do text dash center. Then I'm going to do justify content center. Since uh, we're creating a row, rows are usually displayed as flex, so we can do justify content center like so. And if I press enter, this will create a div for me. And inside here, I'm going to create a column, so a call, and this is going to be medium screens. I want this to be full width. And then on larger screens, I can do large, column, large, six, dot, margin, bottom of six, and then margin, bottom of medium, zero. So we reset it on uh, medium screens and above and press enter. So inside here, I'm going to have an H1 tag, like so. And this H1 tag is going to have a couple of classes. First of all, display two. This is going to make it a little bit bigger. And then font weight is going to be both. Margin bottom is going to be four. Home. And I'm going to set the position as relative. And I'll show you why in a second. For the title, I'm going to grab something and say, write your thoughts down as they come to you. And then I'm going to create a paragraph just underneath here. So for the paragraph, we're going to have a let's say class name to make it a little bit bigger fs4 font size 4 margin bottom of 4 and for the paragraph i'm going to copy and paste something so this is going to be notes is a simple to use free notes taking up uh, made with node.js ejs and mongodb and the last thing that i'm going to do is create a button so ahref and this button is going to be just an authentication button so all so we need all and then google like so and this is going to have a bunch of classes as well. So button, btn for short, btn primary. And I'm going to make a btn large as well. Let me close this. And this is going to say, try notes, it's free. That's pretty much our homepage done now. Let's refresh and have a look at what we get. That's already looking pretty good. But what I'm going to do is add some stars in here and add uh, two nice illustrations in here as well what we can do for the h1 here we can create a custom class name of home dash title and since we have this position relative this is going to make it easy for us so let's go back and paste it inside here like so for the title first of all let's do content and then i'm going to do url and inside here we're going to put dot dot slash images to select the image that I want and the image that I want is called stars.svg I'm going to put the position for this by the way I need to I'm going to make a set of class on this so this is going to be dot dot before and then after this we're going to position it as absolute and then I'm going to position this to the left of minus 50 pixels and to the top of minus 30 pixels like so and I'm going to do exactly the same thing but I'm going to create another pseudo class, which is going to be called after. And this is going to create a kind of like a ghost element in our HTML page. You'll see how it works in a second if you're not familiar with it. So this is again absolute, but this time we have instead of left, we have right. And instead of top, we have bottom. Okay. If we save this and if you go back, you'll see that we have the stars. Pretty cool. Now let's add the two illustrations and we should be good to go. Now I'm actually only going to add illustrations on the big screen because on small screen it could get a little bit distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this into a media query. Media and this media query is going to be a simple one. So minimum minimal width is going to be one two zero zero pixels, and then I'm going to put the home class inside, which is put on the body tag, and then I'm going to change the background. So let's do background. I'm going to have a couple of backgrounds. So let's put them. Oops. Let's put them on a new line here so we can see a little bit better. So URL and inside here we put dot dot slash um, image. And then we need, probably need this. Single quotes. And then image uh, human one. One dot SVG. And this is going to be positioned left bottom and it's going to be no repeat like so. So we put another comma, duplicate this. This is going to be human two. And we're going to have right bottom, no repeat. Then I'm going to uh, re add the noise because uh, this is probably going to override it. So what I'm going to do is one more here and I'm going to put 
noise dot bg and then i'm going to put this to the left in fact it doesn't matter too much top and then this is going to be repeat because i want to repeat this background everywhere and the last thing that i'm going to do is put a background color so i'm going to put the background color of the background color that we added earlier which is yellow uh save this let's have a look a refresh okay that's already looking good we have the two humans in here and if i scale down the website you'll see that it's not looking too bad on mobile it's working well so i'll leave it as it is and you can spend a little bit more time to make it more interesting if you click on the about page you will see that this is working and so on all right this is going to be the css for the entire website and now everything should be fairly straightforward to do let's close everything else and let's handle the 404 page so for example if we go to a route that doesn't exist let's just type some random letters you'll see that we're getting cannot get so in order to fix this what we can do is if we go back to the app.js file here and if you go down to the routes inside here we can create a new route inside here but it needs to be the last route of all so make sure that it's the last route otherwise this will not work and this route is going to go something like this so maybe we just put under 404 like so and then we can do app.get and inside here we put a star and then function and then the function is going to have the request and the response like so and then we're going to have in curly bracket for example you can do res.stated and then we can put 404 and then you can do send and then we can send 404 page not on like so and that should work if I save this and if I go back, so let's go to a page that doesn't exist, refresh, you will see that we're getting 404 page not found. Of course, you can render a custom page if you wish to. So instead of send, let me copy this. Instead of send, what you can do is dot render. And then you say which page you want to render. In this case, maybe just call it 404. And of course, you need to go to the views and make a 404 page so in this case maybe we can uh, grab the index here copy everything and put 404.ejs and then inside here i'm gonna put uh, instead of the title here i'm gonna put page not found dot and then i'm gonna put something else like here then i'm gonna remove this and let's put a button here that says explore notes So, and this can go to the home page or something like this. Let's go back. And, oops, I probably zoomed in too much. And as you can see, this is now same page not found, which looks pretty nice. Uh, it has the class of the uh, title, and that's why they're appearing like so. But yeah, not so bad. So, if we go to about, home, and if we make an error, we have three routes. Cool. Save this. Let's close everything else down okay let's set up our dashboard route just because we're gonna need this for the next section so what i'm gonna do is let's minimize everything and i'm gonna go to app.js and where we have our route first of all i'm gonna create another one and uh, this is gonna be route dashboard and then everything else stays the same so we're gonna have to create this route in server routes dashboard so server routes and dashboard js and then we also need to create the controller for this so i'm going to do the same here dashboard controller js and we should be good to go let's focus on the route dashboard here first of all and include everything that we need so we're going to need express and the express router in fact we can grab this from this one here so let's grab pretty much all of this and paste it in here so we have const express require express const router express router we have the main controller and this is going to be in fact this is going to be dashboard controller dashboard controller and dashboard controller controller and we do need to 
export this as well. So module dot export equals router like so. And inside here is where we're going to create our route. Let's create a very basic one. I'm going to paste a comment for the dashboard routes. And let's just get one from the index router here. I'm going to get this one here. Save a little bit of time. And then I'm going to paste in here. So router.get. And this, this one is going to read dashboard. And then we're going to have the dashboard controller this time. And then this can be called home, whatever you wish. Um, let's call it dashboard, I guess. Dashboard like so. And now we need to jump into the dashboard controller super quickly and create a very basic one. So maybe we can go to the main controller here and copy the home page like so and paste it in here. So get dashboard. Uh, we can say dashboard for this. It's fine. And then we need to render the dashboard page. So Dashboard. I'm thinking of making a custom layout for this, so maybe we can call it dashboard as well. And the page that we want to render, maybe we can either have it in views here or we can make a new folder for the dashboard. So, what I'm going to do, let's make a new folder. Board. And then inside here is where I'm going to create the page. So, dashboard.ejs. The only issue now is that I'm going to have to do render dashboard slash dashboard but uh we could have called it index maybe yeah let's call it index and then we can call this one index as well sorry about that maybe that would be a little bit better and we need to create this dashboard layout as well i want to make it a little bit different potentially uh we'll see how it goes so under layout i'm gonna get the main layout from here i'm gonna copy it and I'm going to create one more and we're going to call it dashboard.js. So this is going to be our dashboard. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, just to recap, we've put the routes in here to the dashboard. We've created the dashboard route in here, which has only one route when you hit the dashboard. It goes to the controller, which is here. And the controller is fairly simple. In fact, this needs to say dashboard, very important. So this is going to trigger and render the dashboard index page which is going to be the main dashboard page and it's going to use the layout of dashboard and i think that's pretty much it let's just test it super quickly uh so if you go to the website and if we put slash dashboard you should see that the layout is working and then if we go to let's say the dashboard and the index maybe we can just put uh, h1 and say dashboard no. Okay, cool. This is all working. We'll style this a little bit later on. The other thing that I wanted to do is for the dashboard layout, I wanted to change the header. So if we go to the dashboard layout, maybe we can just do a different header for this. Um, let's do header dashboard, header underscore dashboard. Okay, and now we need to create this partial. So I'm going to literally copy this one here and create a new one header underscore dashboard dot pjs and then we paste it so this is going to change ever so slightly pretty much instead of having this i'm going to have a search bar later i'm going to put it like that so this is going to change a little bit i'm going to have a search bar in the middle so let's toggle the wrap and let's do a form and i'm going to show you how to link this later on anyway so let's do a form with the class of uh, navigation and then call 12 call medium auto flex fill margin bottom of two justify content center and margin bottom of medium two uh, for this the row is going to be search like so we're going to have a method of post which i'm going to explain later on and we're going to have a an action of dashboard and then search cool. so inside here is where we're going to have an input for the search bar so we do input like so and this input is going to be the type of search and then we can do name we can put the search 
term, which is going to be important for later use. I'll explain it as we go. Class is going to be form control border primary. And then I'm going to have a placeholder search. And then I'm going to have a area label of search. So, so that's all good. And the last thing that I'm going to do here is just create a logout button instead. So logout and then let's remove this. Let's remove the margin and let's just say logout instead. Okay, if we've done this correctly, now with a refresh, we have a search bar and we have the logout button, which goes to slash logout, and that's absolutely fine. Now that we have this, we can actually focus on creating our database and then doing the authentication. For the database, we need to go to MongoDB and you can create a free account by clicking the button here at the top right corner. I can zoom in a little bit. And then all you need to do is fill up your first name, last name, company, email, password, and create an account. Or you can just use the sign up with Google, which is kind of like what we're going to be making today, I guess. And I've already got an account, so I'm just going to sign in instead and log in with my email here super quickly. All right, once you log in, your dashboard should look similar to this. I've already got a few projects, so that's why it might be a little bit different. But usually it greets you and it tells you to create a new project or a new database. So this is what we're going to be doing now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on projects here and I'm going to create a new project. Let's give this project a name of node.js dash nodes and then create it. For this, I'm going to be the project owner, create project. And now here it says current IP address is not added. So this is actually for security reasons. You can add your personal IP address. So when you're working locally, you'll be the only one to, uh, to be able to access the data, which is great. So I'll definitely recommend you to uh, do that so you can access the database. But also when you upload your project on a server, you have to change this from the network access in here. So let's add my IP address first of all. And this has added the IP address for me. And now all I need to do is build a database. Okay, here we have three options. The one that we're going to be using today is the free shared one. Click create. And then if we scroll down a little bit, I'm going to leave the default to Amazon. The closest region to me is Ireland, so I'm going to leave it as default. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can read about the specs and so on, but all we need to do here is create the cluster. Now, this is going to take a few moments to create the cluster, but until that's happening, we do need to create a username and password for database. So the username in this case, I'm going to put ready and then the password I'm going to auto generate and copy. Now, let me make a note of the password somewhere. In fact, I'm going to open the, let me close everything and I'm going to open the .env file here and I'm going to make a note of it. So this is my password. And then let's create the user. Okay, as you can see, the user has been created and the cluster has finished provisioning. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Everything is looking good. The IP address is here, which is great. And now we can finish and close. Congratulations on setting up access rules. Go to databases. All right, so this could take a little while to start, but what we need to do now is click on the connect button and then go to connect using VS Code. So I'm going to click on this and this is going to give you some instructions, but essentially all we need to do from here is to copy the string, this one here, the connection string. So I'm going to copy it and then go to the .env file. And inside here is where we're going to create our first .env variable. So for this, I'm going to call it MongoDB URI underscore URI. And this is going to equal the string that we just copied. And if you look at the string super quickly, you will see that it's using my username, which is Raddy, and it has the password as blank. 
So this is why I copied the password earlier. I'm going to cut the password and paste it inside here. So we have the username and password for the database. And then we have the rest of the MongoDB URL in here, which is not important for us, I guess. And then we have kind of like, I think this was the database name. So if you don't change this, it's just gonna, your database will be called test. And I don't really mind, I'll show you later on, but yeah, just the database is gonna be called test. You, you can name it whatever you wish, maybe name it notes or whatever. Let's keep it as it is and save. Let's go back to MongoDB and close this. And as you can see, the cluster is now ready to use. And if you go to browse collection, well, we won't get anything because we don't have any data. So this is all good. Let's have a look at how we can actually connect to the database. So we go back. All right, if we close everything and let me minimize everything. All right, if we minimize everything and let's navigate to the server folder and inside here, I'm gonna create another folder called config. So inside this folder, I'm gonna create a file called database. So db.js. And inside here is where we're gonna be adding our database connection. Now we actually need to start by requiring mongoose here. So const mongoose equals require. And then we require mongoose. And then the first thing that we need to set is mongoose set. And then we need to set the strict query. And this is basically going to remove some of the warnings that you get in the terminal. And now we can make connection to a database by creating a const connect DB. And then this is going to be an asynchronous function like so. And then inside here, because this is an asynchronous function, we can do try catch. And then in the try, we can do, we can create a const con as connection for short. And then this is going to be equals await mongoose.connect. And then inside here, we put the connection string, which we saved in our dot uh, env file. So essentially we want to bring this string here. And in order to do this with, with dot env, we can do process dot env dot mongo db underscore your i make sure that you spell that correctly. Save this. And now we can console log the connection. So let's say console log. And inside here we can do database. Connected, and in fact, we need to do it with slanted single quotes like so, so we can put template literals. And I'm gonna do a dollar sign here, and we can do con the connection uh, comes from here, and we do uh, connection host. So save it, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do in here is catch the error by doing console log. And then we catch the error from here. We should be able to use this in our application. But before we do that, we need to export the connection DB and we need to do module dot export. And then we export the function here. And now we can import this file into our main app.js file. So if you open that here under the express layout, we can do const connect db equals require and then we require server slash and then config folder and then we require the database file that we just created like so but we need to actually start this function somewhere so maybe here under the static files we can just do connect to db like so and then i'm going to put a little comment just so people know, connect to database. And that's it. If we save, technically speaking, we should be able to see database connected and it's gonna give you the URL. Now, if you didn't connect, you probably won't get that and you'll get an error. And I'm gonna show you super quickly. Let's say if we didn't change the password from here, we put it as, I don't know, let's say it was one, two, three, something that is not the correct password. Let's save this. 
and now you will see that maybe refresh the page let's have a look uh, i think it's stuck let's have a look i don't know if i saved it oh it's because the dot env doesn't auto relate when i change stuff in the dot env okay but as you can see but authentication authentication failed so if you get this it's basically gonna it's most likely gonna be your username and password so i'm gonna leave it as it was and hopefully if i restart the server we should be good to go all right now let's close everything except the app.js file and let's start building our authentication so inside here i'm gonna bring in a few packages so we're ready and i'm gonna start with the const session and this is gonna be equals require and then we require the express session this is going to help us store sessions in our database uh, so when a user logs in they can be kept logged in we also need to import the passport which we're going to be using for login so const password equals require and then we require password we also need mongo uh, store so const and this is going to be equals mongo store equals require and then inside here we do connect mongo i think that might be it so the first thing that we need to do is initialize passport somewhere around here maybe so we can do app dot use and then we do passport and then initialize and then we need to do app dot use and then passport session And we'll come back to the sessions in a second, but let's start by creating our authentication route. So what I'm going to do is in app.js one more time, I'm going to create another route. And this one, this one is going to be called all. So I'm going to copy another line and let's change index to all like so. And that's absolutely fine. So in routes, we need to create it. Let's go to here and then just do all.js and we should be good to go in that front and inside here is where we're going to need to bring the router so i'm going to grab this from the index.js and just bring the uh, express and the express router to start with and as always make sure that you export it so module dot export and then this is going to be equals router otherwise it won't work and now we can look into passport the first thing that we need to do is include passport in here so const passport equals require you require passport and now it's a good time to have a look at the password uh, documentation super quickly so if you go to passportjs.org and if you click on strategies you'll see that they have a lot of strategies uh, such as the http bearer the facebook uh, google World, twitter and so on but if we search for google you will see this one here passport dash google dash all 20 which is what we installed early in this tutorial this is the most downloaded one as you can see currently so if you click on this this will give you a little installation guide on how you can actually install it and use it so as you can see early in this tutorial we installed it so we're done in this case and then if you scroll down we need to include this strategy so let's do that i'm going to copy it and paste it in here so instead of var i'm going to put it as const so we have const google strategy equals require passport google dash zero or 20 dot strategy now if you want to use this if we scroll down a little bit further you'll see this code here i'm going to copy it super quickly and paste it inside here and then and then essentially we're going to need to get a client id from google and a client secret from google as well and a callback url so let me show you how we can create this okay go to console.cloud.google.com and sign in with your google account or register i guess and once you do hopefully you'll be at this welcome screen here and all you need to look for is how to create a new project so inside here i can click on the drop down menu and click on new project so if you find that just name your project i'm going to call it node.js dash notes tutorial like so and then i'm going to leave everything as default 
Okay, this is going to create the project for me and it's going to take a second. Now that we are done, I can select the project. You will see that the project is selected here and then I can go to the dashboard. On the dashboard, you should be able to see this APIs column here. And what we need to do is click on go to APIs overview, then click credentials. And then we need to create a credential. The one that we need to create is the zero auth client ID. And then it's asking me to configure the consent screen, which is fair enough. So we need to do this first of all. Let's configure it. So for this, I'm going to be using the user type external so everybody can register to my website and create. The app name is going to be nodes. And then the support email, I'm going to put my email. If you have a logo, put your logo. That might look really nice in the login screen, as you can see here. I don't have one, unfortunately, so I'm going to skip this. And when you actually publish your application somewhere online, it would be good to put your actual domain name with the privacy policy link and the terms of service. But other than that, if you scroll down under authorized domains, I'm just going to put the developer contact information as well. And then save and continue. For this, I'm just going to skip all the steps and save and continue. Save and continue. And then just back to dashboard. At this point, if we click on credentials, now we should be able to create our credentials in here. So let's click create credentials one more time and click on zero auth client ID. And in this case, we're going to have a web application. So select that. I'm going to leave the name as web client one, call it whatever you like. And then inside here is where we need to put authorized URLs. And in this case, I'm going to grab the local host and paste it in here. Add, and we should be good to go. And then we also need to authorize redirect URI. For this, this is very important. We need to put HTTP localhost of 5000. And then we need to say Google slash callback. That's it. And now we need to, or do we need to add URI? No. Um, okay, it's not like in the session here. That's absolutely fine. And now we can create it. Note that it can actually take five or more minutes to take effect. So be patient. Let's create this. This will give you your client ID and your client secret, which is what we need for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go to my .env file. And inside here, I'm going to paste the first variable and then I'm going to copy the second variable and I'm going to paste it in here. So let's fill the date in here. Client ID, it's going to be equals this client ID in here. Copy and paste. And then the client secret is going to be this one here. Copy and paste and save now we can access them from the or.env file and to do this we can do process dot env and we put the name the same for the other one process dot env google underscore client underscore secret in fact we can do the same thing for this one here but we need to change the url the google callback is what we've put inside here if you remember inside the old client here and so what i'm going to do is instead of this i'm going to put localhost of 5000 like so and then i'm just going to remove this and put google callback so we can definitely move this as well to the .env file let me copy this and maybe we can say uh google underscore callback url and this is going to be equals the url that we have in here copy paste and that should do the job and now if we replace this sorry, i need to copy it yep. if we copy this and if we put it here env dot google callback uri url in this case save okay let's go back to passport here and then let's have a look uh, when we scroll down we have to route so for example as a route middleware in express application so we can get the auth google which this is where we linked or sign up and login buttons we can get this and also this is a successful authentication redirect now so they're going to be very useful let's copy both of them and we can paste them somewhere around here in the same auth file 
and let's have a look at what we need to modify so this is going to be your google login route and this is going to be receiving the user data route the only thing that i'm going to modify from here is this remove the auth so we have google callback instead and instead of doing the successful function here what we can do is we can do it inside here so we can do another comma and we, so we have failure redirect and this is going to be maybe we can redirect them to the login page we don't actually have a login page so i'm going to redirect them to home or you can create a different page if you wish but then we have a success page success redirect and this is going to be or dashboard so slash dashboard so when we log in i want the user to go to the dashboard and that is looking good uh, we probably don't need the comma here if you wish to have a failure a redirect so maybe you can say maybe you can say failure in here then what you can do is create a quick router in here so i'm going to put router if something goes wrong and then you can do router dot get and inside here we can do the login dash failure page and then this is going to have a request and a response and then this is going to be equals and then we can just send rest or send some data or you can render data if you wish but i don't want to create the page so something went wrong essentially if we get the failure it's going to go to this and it's just going to display something went wrong which is fine and now if you scroll up a little bit more let's focus on the password.use one more time and we've already done here the uh, client id the client secret and the callback but let's have a look at the actual function so depending on what you're doing uh, you could have an access token and a refresh token but today we're only going to be using this profile and this cb so the CB, it's a little bit confusing, but if you search for it in here, you will see that the CB, the verified callback, must call CB providing a user to complete authentication. I'm going to show you how we can do that as well. But what I wanted to show you now is, as you can see, they have an example of find or create user. We're going to have to do this slightly different. But before we do that, I want to show you how we can actually get the user data. For example, let's do console.log. And then I'm just going to log in the log the profile. So the profile comes from here. Um, and also we are only getting the uh, password authentication uh, scope profile, but it might be helpful to actually get the email as well. So what I'm going to do is put email and then put comma. And now we can get the email and the profile, which is great. But what I wanted to show you here is that when we click login, I want to display the user object so when we click the login button it's going to go to off google which we've already done here if you however you see on the left bottom corner that it's going to go to off google so let's click that and see what happens site so cannot be reached okay um app is not defined okay so because we copied the code from the website i totally forgot that we can't use this in here we need to use the router so let's copy the router so router.get router.get and yeah and i've done this one correctly okay and then we export the router one more time everything is working so let's go back refresh uh login session requires session support and this is happening because in app.js we have the app.use passport session so let's comment this for a sec and let's go back so everything is working fine no errors if we click on sign up you will see that we are getting we are presented with the accounts that i'm currently logged in so if i click on ready here and if i put my password you will see that something is happening it's redirecting let's have a look at the console log so this is what i wanted to show you we haven't configured the rest of the stuff but this is what i wanted to show you so we are getting a full object of the google account so we're getting the Google ID, display name, the name, family name, given name. We're getting the email now. And then I'm getting a profile photo, which we can also use if we wish. To. So let's finish the rest. And then we should be able to uh, sign in successfully and make a user profile in our database as well. So there are a couple of things that we need to do. In all.js, at the bottom here, 
we're going to have to create two more functions. The first one is going to be persist user data after successful authentication. And the second one is going to be retrieve the user data from a session. So those two functions can be found on Passport as well, but I'm going to write them super quickly. Passport dot serialize user. And inside here we do function and we do user done. And then we do done. And then we put no or send the user ID after successful authentication. And then the next one is going to be the retrieving user data. So password dot the serialized user and then this one is going to be function id done and then inside here we put user dot find by id and then the id and then function error user and then inside here we put done the error and the user so this is not going to actually work because we haven't actually created our model and also just to finish this off before we created the model let's go back to app.js and somewhere somewhere below the port number maybe we can definitely untoggle this back app.use password.session and inside here we can do app.use session and then we can do we can do secret and this is an example from the official documentation uh, make sure that you change this and then resave we're going to change to false then save initialized we're going to change to true and then for the storing sessions we're going to store them in our database so store and then we're going to do mongo store this is why we're using mongo store by the way and then we're going to do create and then we can create a new session for the user mongo url like so and the mongo url is going to be process dot env dot mongo db uri this is going to come from the dot uh, env file and now the last thing that we need to do to fi finalize our authentication is to actually create the model so let's close this and let's go here at the top of of js let's bring in a model so what i'm going to do is first of all inside the server i'm going to create another folder called models and inside here i'm going to create our first model which is going to be the user of js and this is essentially how the data is going to be structured in our database i need to link this authentication file to the user so what we can do is put const user equals require and then we require the model so dot dot slash uh, models and then we do user and now we need to create our model so inside user.js we need to bring mongoose so const mongoose equals and then require and then we require mongoose okay and now to create our schema we need to do const schema equals mongoose.schema and then we can do const user schema equals new schema and then inside here is where we list the schema but before we do that let's export it so we're going to do module not export and then we're going to do mongoose not model and then i'm going to call this one user and then we want to port essentially the user schema from here and we are good to go all right now we need to create our schema the first one i'm going to get is the google id and the way i've done this is by looking at the data that we get like the id the display name family name given name email and profile photo so this is how it's going to work let's start with the google id and then the google id is going to be a type excuse me and this is going to be a type of string this is going to be a required field so we need to put required true and we are actually good in this one so what i'm going to do now is copy this and paste it a couple of more times so this one is going to be display name 
type of string required true. Paste it one more time. First name. This is going to be type of string required to true. We can do last name. Type of string required to true. Uh, we're going to do profile image. Type of string required to true. And then the last one is going to be the date that the user has registered. So create it at. And then this is going to be a type of date. And this is going to be have a default. Uh, so it's going to have a, a default value. Which is going to be the date now. That's it. Let's remove the comma and we should be good to go with our model. If we close this in the auth.js file, what we need to do now that we're getting the profile, what we need to do is in fact, let's change this to done. And inside here, let's remove the console log. Now, first thing that we need to do is, is use the profile to create an object of it so we can insert it to the database if the user hasn't registered yet. So for this, I'm going to do const new user and then this is going to be equals and then from here we start listing all the fields so google id and this is going to be equals profile dot id so essentially we're going into the profile object and we're grabbing the id and then i'm going to do comma and then we're going to have display name and this is going to be profile dot uh, display name like so then we're going to do another one first name this is going to be profile dot name dot given name and this is like that because we need to go into name and then we can then select the first name or given name that's why it's like this by the way and then we need one more so this is going to be last name profile name and family name Okay, and then we need the image. And the image, and for the profile image, we can do profile dot photos. And then we select the first object and then we select the value inside. Just to show you one more time, we have photos, value, and then we select this value in here. So this function needs to be converted into an asynchronous function. So async, like so. And then inside here, now we can use try catch. And then for the catch, I'm going to do console.log. And then we're going to log the error. Error. And then for the try, there are essentially two things that we need to do. We need to, first of all, query the database and see whether we can find an existing user. And if we do, we can successfully log them in. And if we don't find a user, then we can create one and then we can log them in. To do this, we can do let user and this is going to be equals await user dot find by not find one is the one that I'm looking for. And by the way, this is coming from the user model. And then find one. And then inside here, we can put the parameters that we want to search for. So in this case, we're going to look for Google ID. And this is going to be equals profile.id coming from here. And that's already looking good. And now we can do if user, if we get the user, then done. And then we can put no and then user. The next bit is going to be else. If we don't get the user, we can do user equals await. And then we can do user. And we are creating the user this time. Create, and then we can just put the whole object from here, which will give us the profile ID, the name, the given name, family, and picture. So we just put it in here like so. And then we can just do done, and then no, and then user. I've got the catch around here as well. And let's study things up. Sorry. Okay, let's study things up super quickly. And if we do right click on all my document, that might make it a little bit better. Okay. Because I'm using prettier. I think that might be it. So if we go to the website, 
by the way make sure that you don't have any errors i might have to scroll down a little bit yep no errors so far if we go back to the website uh refresh it's all working so if i click sign up and then if i click on ready a user find by id is not a function yeah that's correct so if i go here we need to do you scroll down a little bit online 65 i've made a mistake i've put the so find by uh, i've missed the i in here so find by i think it's find by id dot find by id like so okay very mistake and now if i go back okay website is working no errors all right now if we click sign up and then if we click on my username let's put the password in and just like that we were redirected to the dashboard which means that we've successfully logged in and we're not getting any errors and now if we go back to the database so as you can see earlier we had no data but now if i refresh we should be able to see the test here the test database which i mentioned earlier in this tutorial where we have the .env at the end here i've put test so this is the name you can change to whatever you like but then if we look closely we are having a session and this session has an id expiry date and a session cookie on and it has a lot of uh, data such as the expiry and so on and then the other thing that we need to look at is the user so or user model we need to check whether we get all the data so i've got the object id in here as you can see i've got google id i've got the display name the first name the last name i've got the profile image and we've got the created ad, which means that our login is actually working. And that's awesome. If I was to right click and inspect, you also see under applications that you probably have a new cookie created here. And that's coming from the session code that we created in our app.js. And one thing that we need to do for the session is to hook up our logout button. So let's do that. Uh, inside auth.js, let's do the round around the route here. I'm going to do destroy user session in here. So this is going to be a route router dot get. And then inside here, we're going to do logout. Okay. We're going to do, okay. We're going to do slash logout. And then I'm going to do comma. And then inside here, I'm going to do request response. And then we're going to do a narrow function like so. And uh, to destroy the session, we can do request. We can grab the request and then session and then destroy like so and then inside here error and we just need to put if we have an error then we want to console login and then we want to res dot send and then we can do a message such as error logging out but then we can add an else statement here and if we successfully logged out maybe we can just redirect to the home page so res.redirect i'm just going to put the home page of course you can choose whatever you like uh, maybe even create another page whatever uh, that should be all logout working and if you remember early in this tutorial the header i actually linked this to slash logout so we already done here and i can click on it and as you can see it goes to the home page now the issue here is that even though that I just logged out and I can even let me remove everything from here that we don't need even though that I logged out and I can even remove the session here let's do that I'll show you how this works in a second as well if I go to the website and if I go under slash dashboard you will see that I'm able to go to the dashboard even though that I'm not authenticated now so let's fix that in order to do that i'm going to create another folder in the server folder called middleware and in this folder we're going to have the check auth dot js and now inside here we're going to do a simple function that we're just going to export 
port dot and I'm gonna do is logged in equals function and then we can do request respond and next and then inside here we're gonna say if we get a user request dot user when we log in then we go next and then else if we don't get a user then we want to uh, return something like return and then we can do res dot status and then inside here maybe we can do 401 and we can do send and then we can send access deny to something like that of course you can do instead of res dot send you can do res dot render and create another page for access the night in this case we've got the check in here and we can close this and now inside or route so i'm gonna go to route dashboard and then inside here we can bring that function by going const and then we can do uh is logged in and then we can do require and then we're going to require the dot slash middleware and then inside here we're going to do check or so we're requiring this file and now if you want to secure this route or any other route we can get the is logged in put it inside here with a comma and now this route should be protected in order to test this we can go to our website and the dashboard and if we click enter you will see access denied which means that it's protected in order to see whether this works we can go back to the website and let's sign in so if i click sign in oh it will already sign me in because i think the browser knows that i'm already logged in with google so but what i can do is i can open a new browser super quickly maybe and then i'm gonna go to the website sign in and then if i sign in with my account you will see that i'm now logged in i can go pretty much anywhere i can go to the home page if i wish to i can go to the dashboard if i wish to but now if i log in i log out sorry and if i try to go to the dashboard i can't so the authentication is working and also if you go back to the original browser here and if i go to sign in so we are signed in right now and let me show you how the sessions actually work as well if we click on sessions we should see new sessions in here and i don't know which one is which so i'm going to delete both okay now that i deleted the sessions i was logged in here but look what happens if i refresh access the night so this is pretty cool the sessions are working as well and one more thing that I could show you about the sessions is that if we go to the app.js file and if you look at the app.u session with the keyboard cut in here, you could change the cookie expiry if you wish to. Uh, for example, you can put another property here, so cookie. And then this could be, you can put the max age in here. For example, let's say max age, new date. And then this is going to be date dot now and if we do plus and inside here if we do three six with five zeros one two three four five oh i put the i forgot to put the dot okay that should now work and now that should make it an hour and if i was to save this and if we go and log in one more time okay so sessions refresh Hopefully you'll see that the uh, expiry now has changed. It was no before. I'm not sure if you can see, but it has changed. It was no before. And I can show you and you can mess around with this. Obviously, I think it's best to just leave the, lo the user logged in as long as possible without compromising the security. If you wish to know how to do I don't know, something like seven days, uh, you can do something like days you can do something like this or if you wish you can do 30 days if you wish so this is going to be the days uh you can create a variable or you can just put 30 days and that should work as well i'm going to leave these here if you wish to mess around and i'm going to comment this okay let's have a look at what do we have next All right now is a good time to start looking into the dashboard so for this let me close everything and let's start by creating a new model so where we have server models, let's create a new one and we're going to call this one notes JS and inside here, let's have a look at what we get inside here. I can 
copy those two, paste them in here. And so we have const mongoose require mongoose, const schema equals mongoose schema. And we need to export this. We need to create a new schema. So this one is going to be const node schema equals new schema. And just like before, the way we've done the users, we're going to list all the fields in here. And once we do that, we do need to close this. We do need to module export it. Export equals model. And then the model that we're going to export is going to be called note. And then I'm going to export the note schema like so. So let's create a very simple model for the note. Every single note will have to have a reference to the user. So when you make a query on the dashboard, you can only see your nodes, not everybody else's. And in this case, we can do user. And then inside here, we can do a type. And then this is going to be schema dot object ID. And then reference is going to be user. After this, we're going to get the title. For the title, this is going to be a type of string. And this is going to be a required field. And now we can actually copy this one more time. Put comma. And then this is going to be the body of the node. And then this is going to be a type of string. Required, I've misspelled. Required, required, like so. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is create it at. And then we're going to do type. It's going to be date. And then this is going to be the food. Date dot now. So we get the current date and time and we should be good to go. Oops, close this. All right, now that we have the nodes model. Let's go back to controllers and let's click on the dashboard controller and we want to focus on the dashboard page here. So we actually want to be able to use this controller. We want to be able to read nodes, add nodes, update nodes and so on. In order to do this at the top here, we're going to bring the nodes model so we can do const node equals require. And then we require the nodes by doing dash dot dot slash models to go to the folder and then we do note that's done and then we need const mongoose to interact with the database so we require wire and we require mongoose now if we were to go on the website right now we'll need a little bit of work maybe we can put this uh, in the middle and so on so let's start building that so leave the dashboard controller open and let's open the actual views and then dashboard and then the index which is the main dashboard page so from here let's build it up i'm going to wrap everything into a container fluid and then i'm going to add my container fluid kiss class we're going to do adding bottom of five and then margin bottom of five as well and press enter this will create a div and inside here we can start designing our layout so to start with, I'm going to create a row with the margin bottom of four. And this is going to hold kind of like a hey message and maybe a link to uh, adding new notes. Let's create two columns. So call and then inside the first call, we're going to have hey and we're going to have the username, which we're going to replace very shortly. And in fact, I can wrap this into an H1 tag just to make it look a little bit bigger and nicer. And then we can close the column here and we're good to go. Let's create another one. So div with the class name of call and then text end to push it to the right side. We're going to have a link. So a href and this link is going to be to the dashboard. And then maybe we can create an add page for the notes. That's it. Let's give it a class name or button MBTN primary. And maybe we're going to do plus new note. So if you go back and just refresh, you'll see that we have hey username and we have the note here, which is supposed to be on the right side. Maybe I misspelled something. Yeah, I spelled text and wrong. 
So if I refresh, you have it on the right side here. And straight away, if we go back to the dashboard controller here, we should be able to get the username by doing, for example, we have the locus, we have the layout here, and we can keep on adding to this. So for example, we can do user name, and we should be able to access the request.user and access the first name, for example. First name, like so, and save. So essentially, I should be able to use username inside here with EJS, like so. Put the username in here and I will save. And if I refresh, you will see that it says, Hey, ready? And now we can have a look at adding some of the nodes. For the nodes, what I'm going to do is inside here, I'm going to create another div with a class name of row. And inside here is where we're going to be displaying the nodes. Now, I actually haven't got any nodes in the database and we need to create the add node page in order to do that. I want to finish the first page first here. So, what I decided to do is Instead of going backwards and forwards, I'm going to insert some dummy data straight away from here, from the, when we hit the dashboard, I'm going to insert some dummy data and then just remove the code, if that makes sense. We could put a try catch inside here super quickly, and I can say await node, which is our node model here. So we are waiting on the node model, and we are just saying insert many, like so, and inside here as an array. And inside here, we can create a few objects. Since I already know how the database uh, looks like, we're going to have a user and then we're going to have some data. We're going to have a title, body, and cr created that. So, what I've done is super quickly, I've created some data. And let me just show you before I paste it all. Oh, it's just very simple data. So, the user that I actually copied the ID from the user when I registered. So, this is this might be a good thing to uh, change. So, if you go to your MongoDB, uh, just copy your user ID, or you might have it available in your console. Copy it here, just so you can insert that instead, and then have a title, a body for the node, and then like random created that. It doesn't matter too much because later on we're going to be inserting this with a form, and it's all going to be nicely done. This is how it's going to work. All right, so I've copied and pasted a little bit of data here, just so we have a few nodes for the example. All right, let's try to insert those nodes. And obviously, this is not a good idea. We need to remove the code straight after because we don't want to keep inserting documents. But technically speaking, if we hit the dashboard route, we should be able to insert some nodes. And this is also going to create the node collection for us as well. So if I hit F5, hopefully it's done the job if we don't have any errors. And then if I go to the database here and if I refresh, we should have a few nodes now. Here they are. Here we go and that should be good to get started by the way i'll put this data on my blog or the description below you'll find it somewhere and now let's remove it okay let's do a very basic query and display some data and then we'll build on top of this since this is an asynchronous function inside here we can do a try catch and we can do something like const node equals and then we await node and then we can do find like that and we can pretty much find everything if we wanted to and maybe even console.log the notes if we wish to so if i was to run this we should get in the console uh, nope. oh it's because i put note instead of notes all right, if we console log nodes and if we refresh the page inside the console, you should be able to see all the nodes that we have and we can actually display them. We're obviously going to want to do something a lot more complicated than this, but let's start with this and we'll build up the query. So essentially, we want to move the rest render inside here and we want to render the nodes. So I'm going to make some space and make and put notes. And in this case, we're literally going to the database, getting all the nodes and rendering them if i go back to the home page here so if i go back to the uh, dashboard page now we can actually loop through them super quickly if we open and close ejs inside here what we can do is if we get nodes dot length bigger than zero then we want to do a for loop so let's do for variable i equals zero and then we can do 
and then we can do i if i is less than nodes dot length then we do i plus plus and we and we open we can put them on one line here and we can close the ejs like so we can close the ejs in here uh, and then we can close it in here and then we can do that if we put on one line here just so you can see we're getting if nodes the length is bigger than zero and then we're doing a for loop and inside this for loop we can loop the data for example i'm going to create a column sm3 and then margin bottom to be four and that would be for column for the card and then inside here we're going to create a card so dot card border dash primary and then for this i'm actually going to give it a height so i'm going to give it a style of minimum height so they will look a little bit more presentable 210 pixels and then inside here is where we can loop the maybe we can wrap the whole card to be a link itself so i'm going to do a href and then inside here we're going to do slash dashboard and this is going to be getting item and this is going to be the link to each node basically and inside here we can start writing ejs to get the id for the card so for example we can grab the nodes and then and then we put i in here to select the object and then we put underscore and we put dot underscore id and we need to close the ejs like so so that's going to grab us the id also i need to add a class of card dash body and text decoration none as this is a link i don't want it to be all underlined let's close this we're gonna add a title of h5 and this title is gonna have a class of card dash title and inside here we can literally copy this paste in here and we can do notes i and then instead of i this time we're gonna bring the title of the note and then i can literally do the same for the rest so i'm going to do paragraph and this is going to have a class name of card dash text and inside here we can do body like so that's kind of it if you wish to have a button instead of wrapping the whole card you can create a button and just link it but i like it buttonless so let me tidy this up because looking a little weird so this is checking if we get any notes and if we do we loop through them but also if we don't get any nodes we can do an else statement here open the curly bracket and then we need to close them somewhere so i'm going to copy this and just close the curly brackets somewhere down the line and inside here we can do another div with a class name of row and then inside this row i'm going to add a nice image so source and this is going to be under slash images slash human dash free dot svg and then this is going to say human pointing hand towards a create button make it look nice uh, it would be nice to add the height and the width and um, we can actually put this into a column of three and just wrap the image like so so we can put another column on to the next side so we're going to have another call and then this call is going to have a margin top of medium four and then inside here i'm just going to put a title to okay dot 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 and then we put a nice text for example uh, let's put an h4 and we can put let's start with your first node and then we're going to do i'm going to be a little bit lazy and i'm going to do br a breakpoint and one more breakpoint and then after the breakpoints i'm going to do a link so a href definitely not good to have a link into the h4 to do the job for now dashboard and then add this is going to be a create notes button so create one like so and close the link and we should be good to go make sure that you close the ejs at the bottom and hopefully now if we save this and if you go back to the dashboard you should see that we don't have any notes which is a little bit strange and then it's asking us to create one if i was to go back to the database 
let's have a look at what's going on. Uh, we do definitely have some notes in here. Let's see. Okay, and the problem is because I misspelled length. Now, if you go back and refresh, you will see that we're actually getting four nodes and they are all linked and so on. If we didn't have any nodes, then obviously, obviously, if we didn't have any nodes, if I change this to bigger than zero so it doesn't show, then we're gonna get okay. Let's start with your first node. So basically, we are checking the database if we get any nodes, and if you don't get any nodes, we're getting a nice message just to start with. So essentially, when you create your account, you're gonna get this. Okay, let's start with your first node. And when you click, this is gonna go to the dashboard slash add, which we'll create later on, and then we'll be able to add notes. But for now, we do have some notes which I added, so we are all good to go. Now there are quite a few problems with this. First of all, we are looking on the database and we are literally adding all of the nodes that are available. We don't want to do that. We want to do them specifically to the user that's logged in and we don't want anybody else to be able to delete them or update them. But not only that, we're getting a few other problems in here. Now, potentially nodes can get very, very big. These are actually very small examples. And obviously, if they're fairly large, the text is just going to be insane. Although you can put the height to whatever you want and hide the text, that's probably not a good idea, especially if you have a lot of nodes. So what we're going to be building now is I'm going to do the pagination and also I'm going to constrain the title characters and the body characters as well. So we're making the page a little bit more efficient, I guess. Okay, this is going to get a little bit more complicated here. But essentially, this is all cool. And if we go to the dashboard here, so the dashboard controller, let's start looking into the query. So first of all, we'll also need to think about the pagination here. So I'm going to do everything at the same time. Let's start by doing let per page. And then inside here, we can say how many nodes we want per page. And let's see. One, two, three, four. Maybe I can fit 12 and it's going to look nice. So let's say per page we say 12. And then I'm going to say let page is equals. And then the, here we're going to do request dot query. And then we're going to say page. And this is going to be if we don't get any query, it's just going to set it to the first page. Uh, you'll see how this works in a second. Uh, we will have, in fact, we can have this outside. So let's have it just outside here with the locals and then inside the try is now where we're going to start or query. All right, so we need to create a more advanced query now. And to do this, we're going to grab the node, which is our model from the top here. And now we can start with aggregate. Inside here, we're going to put all the options. So let's start with a curly bracket, open and close. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the sort. So the sort is fairly straight explanatory, created at, and I'm going to put minus one. So we want to sort the nodes when we get them by the newest first, and then everything else follows. So this is what we're going to do here. Uh, the opposite can be done with just one, I think, and that will work. And then we need to match the user now. So what we're going to do is use match. And then inside here, we can get user. And then we need to use mongoose dot types dot object ID. And then we're going to get the request user and the ID. So we want to match the nodes that we get from the database to the user. And then we need a comma. And inside here, we can modify the result for the title and the body so we can get less characters than what we get now instead of getting the full note, if that makes sense. So inside here, we're going to do project. And I'm going to do title. And then inside here, we can do substring like so. And then we're going to do title. Well, that needs to be in quotes. And then we're going to put zero and then 30. So I want 30 characters for the title. And I can put comma and copy this. And this is going to be the body now. Exactly the same substring. But in this case, we're going to select the body. And in this case, let's say we want to return 100 characters. So we can save this. There are quite a few ways of doing this, but that's the way that worked best for me here. We're going to add some of the pagination as well. 
So the next thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to chain it and put skip. And then I'm going to put per page, which we created earlier here, per page 12. So we want to skip 12 and then times that by the page and then by the per page. Page. So the page is the actual page that we're going to be on. I'll show you how to do this with uh, the parameters. So for example, the first one is going to be times by one, then it's going to be times by two minus the current page. The next thing that we can chain here, and in fact, I'm going to put it on another line so it looks a little bit better. Um, we can do limit. And inside here, we can limit the results that we get. And again, I'm going to put per page. So we limit 12 results per page like so and then we can do execute and inside here this is going to be a function we're going to have uh, an error and then we're going to have notes and inside here we can do note dot count dot execute function and then we're going to have error count. And then inside here, we're going to say if we get an error, return next error. And now we can render the results just like we did earlier inside here. So I'm going to grab that and paste it inside here. So we want to render the first name, that's fine. We want to render the titles, we want to render the notes, but we also need to add a few other things. We are rendering the uh, dashboard layout, that's fine. But also we want to render the current page. Page. And last but not least, we're going to do some math, which is going to go pages, math, Sally and then count slash per page. So math.sally is a function that always rounds up and returns a smaller integer greater or equal to the given number. Think that we might be good to go now. Do we have, okay, if we have try, do we have catch? Yep, it's just a little bit down here. So if you tidy it up and we do need to do console dot log and then inside here we're going to do error okay that it is up and that's it so if we go back to the website now and if we refresh you will see that i'm getting object object okay so we are getting data but something has gone wrong let's have a look and we'll fix it okay and this is because under here where we have project title and substring substring we need to add the dollar sign one more time. And then if we refresh, you will see that we are getting less characters now. And let's say that, I don't know, let's say that we're getting 20, just so we can test it. And now if we refresh, you will see that we're only getting 20 characters here, which is exactly what we want. I don't actually have 12 nodes, which is not good. All right, I should have inserted a few more nodes for this. So what I'm going to do is insert a few more nodes and then we'll continue. Okay, I've inserted a few more nodes in here. And now if you go back to the dashboard controller, if you remember, we've put per pages 12 and we have this let page equals request query page. So this query can be actually put on the URL and this is actually going to trigger the pagination. So I'm going to show you how this works. And inside here, after dashboard, you can put page equals and then the number so for example i probably won't have enough records but i'm going to do page two and now you will see that we're on page two and we're getting one more record this is because i've only got 13 records in here i should have added a little bit more but you can see that the pagination is working and if i change this to let's say eight or like that now if we hit on this obviously it's going to split it so we're going to have a few here and if i go to the first page page number one, we have the other node. So this is how the pagination is going to work. And of course, we need to display inside here. Now, since we're using Bootstrap 5.2, I'm going to be using this as an example, but I'll create a step-by-step -step just so you can see how it works. 
and I'll probably modify a few of the things. So if we go back to the index.js here and let's have a look. So we have a row and just want to close that. After this row here, we can create all pagination. So let's make some space. All right, so this one is going to be tough to understand. I saw this example online and I slightly modified it to my needs and I will link the article below and I'm going to try to explain it as much as I can. And also just to mention, we're going to be using the bootstrap pagination from here. So potentially we could just copy this, but I'm not sure if it's going to make it worse. So, okay, let's copy here just so we have a few examples, but this is how it's going to be working. So we're going to have the nav, we're going to have the pagination list, and then we're going to have a previous next. Let's open EJS and write if. So we want to check if we have nodes and then the length is bigger than zero. Then, then if the length is zero, bigger than zero for the nodes, we actually want to display the pagination. We close EJS and don't forget to close. So and we should be good to go. So essentially now, if we put this in here just to test it, we should be able to go back refresh and we get a pagination here of course we don't want it this one just yet but uh what i'm gonna do this is gonna get very messy now so for this for the nav i'm gonna copy the nav here and close it like so and then for the unordered list i'm gonna copy this here paste it uh, we need we don't need to close it and then inside here is where we're gonna start doing the check first check is gonna be whether we are on the first page or the previous page, start EJS. And then we're going to do if current is equals equals one, open curly brackets, close EJS. And now we need to display a list. So I'm going to grab one of the lists here, the previous one, and paste it. And then we need to open EJS here and put else. And then inside here, we need to do first. So I'm going to copy this and see whether we can modify and potentially modify. So I'm going to do so page item, page link is fine. And then this one is going to be just called first. And when you click on the dashboard, obviously we want to get the first element. So what I'm going to do is just put dashboard. Like so if we refresh, uh, unexpected catch okay yeah it's because we haven't closed ejs in here i just wanted to test it super quickly that's why Refreshing. okay so if i refresh we're getting previous which is working and this is just a demo okay so far so good the next thing that we need to check is that if the current page has a value less than five then we can display the first four uh links if that makes sense so what i'm going to do let's start another ejs here variable i is equals and we're going to put number we're going to put current and then inside here this is going to be bigger than five else number is going to be current minus four column one and then we close ejs inside here we need to if i is not equals one do that and then inside here we need to first of all close this and then we need to display another list so i'm going to copy one of them paste it inside here and this is going to be just dot 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 and the link is going to be empty as it is that should be absolutely fine and the next thing that we need to do is actually loop through the numbers now uh, to display them the available numbers so i'm going to do let's start a for loop and inside here we do i bigger or equals number and then we're going to do the current plus four and 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 we're going to do i less or equals to pages i plus plus we need to close egs and make sure that you start it and close it here so we don't break anything and now we can check if we're on the current page. So if i is equals equals current, we need to close this. Then inside here, we're going to do a list. I'm going to copy this one here. So list pages, but this one is going to be a little bit different. We just want to display the page here. 
So in this case, we can just use EJS. So I'm gonna do EJS here and then equals, and then we're gonna do I to display the number and let's close EJS. Cool. So this is not gonna be a linked one, but then we need an else statement. And for the else, we're gonna do another one. But this time, this one is gonna be linked and it's gonna be linked to, we're gonna leave this here, but it's gonna be linked to slash dashboard. And then this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna have question mark, page, and then the number, just like I showed you earlier on the browser. Uh, we need to close the else statement as well. Don't forget that. Uh, we need to open the else statement first of all, and then close it. And the last one that we need to do in the loop here is if the number, uh, if i is equals equals number, and then we have current plus four and 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 then we have i less than pages okay let's make sure that we close this as well and this is going to be another list so i'm going to copy one from here okay and this one is going to be instead of three we're going to put there one two three dots and the href is going to stay the same that's absolutely fine uh we could potentially even test this so far Okay, if we check the website super quickly, we are getting an unexpected token. And this is because on 965, I've put this on the wrong spot. So we need to fix this. And now we should be good to go. And for the rest, let's have a look. We're going to have a new EJS here. And I'm going to say if i equals equals number. We're going to have current. And then inside here, we're going to have plus four. And and. We're going to have i smaller than pages. Then we close EGS. We open it here and close it. And inside here, I'm going to put another list like so. And then instead of one, this is just going to have three dots. Let's have a look. Okay, everything is looking good. And the last thing that we're going to do is the last and the next page. So essentially uh, this here. So what I'm going to do is let's start a new EJS. So open EJS. And then if we get current equals equals pages, then, the, then we close EJS. Inside here, we put a list. Uh, this is going to be last and I'm also going to make this one disabled and then we need to close this else open close it and then inside here I'm going to do another list and then this list is going to have a link this time so let's remove the disabled and this is going to have a link to dashboard and then slash page equals and then we're going to bring the page number or the pages like so and we have instead of last we're going to put next next and we need to close the gs okay let's me tidy things up and now if you go back we should see that our navigation is here and let's remove the dummy one from the top and I also want to justify it to the center. So where we have pagination, I'm going to say justify. Justify content center, margin top of five. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing here is when I hover, the link is not the way I want it. So I'm going to go to the index page here and find the link, which is going to be the link for the card. Here it is, I forgot to put slash and then we'll have the ID. So when we go to dashboard item, we're gonna pass the ID of the node and then we can see the node. All right, let's do that now. So what we can do is let's close all this. We're gonna leave the dashboard controller open for now. And what I'm gonna do first of all is in the dashboard views, I'm gonna create a new page called view nodes. 
ebjs and this is going to be our view page and then we also need to create the router for this which is going to be in the dashboard so we can essentially copy this one here and this is going to be dashboard and then maybe we can just put slash and we can put item something like that and we also need to get the id for the item so i can just put dot and id so we'll be able to get this from the url this is going to be the get route but we will need to make a post one we might as well make it now we have the check alt middleware here and we do need to change the dashboard function to be something else such as i don't know dashboard v note and now let's duplicate this one more time and this one is going to be post so we want to view data and we want to post data when we want to update the node. So this one is going to be dashboard control and then dashboard, maybe update node. And then we should be good to go. Now let's create those two functions, the dashboard view node, and we need to create them inside the controller. So here it is. And we have to do it pretty much exactly the same thing as here. So what I'm going to do, make a little bit of space. This is the first one that we need to create and I'm going to paste a comment. So this is going to be the get one and it's going to view a specific node when we click on it. Let me grab this and let's do exports. And then this exports the dashboard v node and it equals async. And then this is going to be request response. I'm going to do an arrow function here and then we can start building the logic. So the logic here is that when we click on a node, this has the ID, so I'm going to refresh. I uh, probably need to start it. All right, and let's create the other one. So I'm going to copy it around here, and I'm going to copy dashboard update node uh, just so we have it, and I'm going to put it here. We don't get any errors and yeah and it's all working so if i if i reload the website when we hover over you will see here on the bottom left of the screen we have dashboard item and then the item id so we want to query the database for this specific id and we want to query it specifically for the user that is logged in so let's have a look at how we can do that and what we need to do is the const note equals wait and then this is going to be note dot find by id and inside here is usually where you can do the actual query so in this case we need to query the id which in mongodb is underscore id and then we can put the actual id that we are passing so we can get it from the actual url by doing rec dot rams dot id and just like that, we should be able to do the query. But we want to make it so that the user that has logged in can only see their note. So in order to do this, we can put a where method. For this method, let me put it on another line so you can see. And this method is going to have the user. And we're going to put the user ID that is currently logged in. So request.user.id. And just like that, this is going to be unique to this user and nobody else is going to be able to read the node and also because we're using a get method we can actually put lean and that should be it now pretty much we need to check whether we get the node and just render it in order to do this we can just say if we get the node uh, let's say if node and then inside we're gonna render the page that we want so res.render and then we want to render the dashboard slash view dash node this is the page here so dashboard view node which we're going to make in a second and then inside here we need to do comma and we need to pass, pass the values that we want in this case i'm going to pass the node id and then i'm going to do request dot params and then id like so with a comma we can put the note the result from the note and then the last thing i'm going to do is the layout so for the layout i'm gonna do dot dot views slash views and then slash layout and then slash dashboard 
And the last thing that we can do is put else, and then maybe we can just put rest of send, and we can just send the message. It went wrong. Okay. So far, so good. If we go back and if we click on one of the pages, we should be able to render the items page with the ID in here. So now let's have a look at how we can actually display the notes and so on. So to start with, let's wrap everything into a container. So dot container fluid dot container dash fluid and then dash custom and then part in bottom of five and then oops part in part in bottom of five and then margin bottom of five. Inside here we're gonna pretty much do two rows. The first row, row of margin bottom four is gonna have a column. So call and then inside this column we're gonna have a breadcrumb. Let's create a navigation for our breadcrumb and this is gonna have a area label of breadcrumb. So and inside here I'm gonna have a list so OL and this OL is gonna have a class name of breadcrumb. So inside here we're gonna create two lists. The first list is gonna have a class name of breadcrumb item. So breadcrumb item and this one is gonna have a link. So a href equals and this link is gonna be basically a back button to the dashboard. So we can just do dashboard and then this is gonna say dashboard. Like so let's copy this or shift down and I can remove the link. And instead we're gonna put EJS in here and bring the title. So equals note.title and then we can close EJS and then this is gonna be an active one. So and now if we refresh you'll see that we're getting the dashboard and the MongoDB tutorial which is actually coming from the database. So if I go to another one, let's say Learn Morgan, you'll see that it says Learn Morgan and so on. Now let's build the rest of the page. So underneath nav here, in the same column actually, we can create another column. So call, this one is gonna be the flex and it's gonna have justify content between. And then this is gonna have align item center. Okay, and inside here we're going to have two things. I'm going to have a title, h1, with the class name of h3 to make it a little bit smaller. And then this is going to say view node. And then I'm going to create a button here. And this button is going to be the type of button. It's going to have the class of btn, btn dash danger. Uh, it's going to have margin e, and we can close this. So this button is actually going to be the delete button, like so. Let's have a look. Uh, but what I want to achieve is that when we click on the delete button, I actually want to bring in a pop-up here so we can delete the notes. So it's basically if you click it, it's going to warn you whether you want to click the notes. So we're going to definitely do this. And in order to do this, we can give this a data dash BS bootstrap toggle equals model. We're gonna give it an ID and the ID is gonna be delete button. Let me maybe roll wrap. And then I'm gonna do data dash bootstrap dash target is equals and then we can do the I don't know, example model. Okay, and now if we wanted to create this model because we added the bootstrap javascript early in this tutorial uh, we can create this somewhere somewhere outside pretty much so what i'm gonna do is search for model in bootstrap i think that this one is gonna do the job so what i'm gonna do is copy this model and just change it a little bit so to start with this is gonna have model and fade the tab index is going to be minus one. The ID on this one is going to be the same with the example 
uh, button here example model so in fact let's do the delete model so it makes sense and then we do delete model for the label i'm going to do you are about to delete this node uh, we're going to have a close button that's absolutely fine and inside here inside the body i'm going to change it and say this will node and then we're going to put b with a class name of font weight bold and then we're gonna put the note title so with ejs we can do dash note uh, title like so and then maybe we can do a b r break and then we can do are you sure are you sure and then for the buttons uh we're gonna have a let's have a look at how they work close and save changes okay so we're gonna have a close button which is fine and then we're gonna have a delete node button okay let's save this and let's see whether it works so if we go here delete the motor is coming up which is great uh, i do want to change the position but this is looking okay a little bit different than what i wanted but uh, that's absolutely fine so what i'm going to do is just change this and then we'll hook it up a little bit later so and say okay now let's finish the rest of the page if you scroll up a little bit the next thing to do inside this div here so outside so not in the first row let me tidy things up so just after the first row i'm going to create another one here and this is actually going to be a form we'll be able to output the note and also we'll be able to update it so let's create a form okay this is going to have an action and we're going to do the action in a minute when we actually build the logic so i'm going to leave this as it is and then we're going to have a method this method is going to be post and then we're going to have a class name of position relative let's close this form and inside the form we're going to basically have two fields so the first one let's make it in a group so div with a class of form dash group margin bottom of form position absolute and i'm going to show you why position absolute i want this to be to look uh, seamless like it's one note instead of two different inputs and then i'm going to just put some style into this to make it in fact let's leave it for now i'll come back to this and inside here we need the input so input and we're going to do the type to be text and then inside here we're going to do the class name of form control and then for font weight bold border zero fs form and the id of this is very important we need to have it as title the name and we need the value and the value is going to come from the database so we're going to do ejs in here equals note.title and let's close ejs like so and then i'm going to put a placeholder if there is nothing so placeholder equals maybe title that's looking good let's have a look if we refresh the page you will see that we have the mongodb tutorial in here that needs to be full width so what we can do is on the div here we can put some styling because i made it absolute style equals left minus one pixel and then top minus top one pixel and then right is going to be one pixel something like this we need to close that and we should be good to go okay now this is full screen and this is actually coming from the database so if we go to another one learn morgan as you can see we have learn morgan in here right let's do the other one so for the other one we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing uh just here below we're gonna have another form field this is going to be form group margin bottom of form we're going to have a text area this time as we want to write a little bit more so this is going to have a class of form dash control padding top of five font size of four and then i'm going to have the id body and then the name is going to be also body very important and then the placeholder is going to be take a note dot dot and then i'm going to create a few rows so rows equals 12 
And then the last thing that we're going to do here is actually put the actual node. So in this case, let's with EJS, we can do node.body instead. And now we can close it. Save this. Let's go back, refresh. And now, as you can see, we're getting the node here. This looks a little bit odd. Maybe it's because I've put minus one pixel. I'm not so sure. Yep, that needs to be one pixel. And that's now inside. So now we have the title and we have the actual node, which comes from the database. As you can see, cool. The next thing that we need to do is the button. So let's tidy things up and let's add the button here. So this is going to be the submit button when we want to update div with the class of form and then group. And then inside here, we're going to create a button. And this button is going to be the type of submit, very important. And then this is going to have the class name or btn, btn-primary. And then btn large. And then we need to put something like update. So we can update the note. So let's start with updating the note first of all. Let's go to the action here. And what we need to do is put slash and then dashboard. And then inside here, we're going to put item. And then inside here, we're going to put the item ID. Now we've passed, so we're going to put note ID like so. And then we are good to go. Essentially, this form is going to have the note ID. And when we post the form, we can grab the ID and we'll know which one to update. Because we're updating the form, we want to use the put method in here. So we can do this by doing question mark underscore method equals put like so. But we do need to change something. So if you go back to the app.js file and if you scroll up the top here somewhere around the top we can put the method of write so let's add it around here let's put const and then let's do method of write and then this is going to be equals require and then we're going to do method of write otherwise this will not let us to do put and patch in order to use the method of write it's actually fairly simple somewhere around here maybe under the json we can do app.use and then we can do method of write like so and then we put the way we want to use it is going to be underscore with method and just like this we should be able to use but to update the note now that we've done this we also want to do the logic for this so if you go back to the dashboard controller and let's go to the update here. What I'm going to do is put a comment and this is going to be put and we're going to update the specific note. So this should be fairly simple to do. Uh, we can wrap everything into a try catch and inside the try we can do request.body user. Inside the try we can do await note.find1 and update like that and then we need to put the query. So in this case, we want to find by ID. So the first one is going to be underscore ID. And then we can pass the ID by doing rec.arounds.id. And let me do it like this because it might look a little bit better. Okay. And the second thing that we need to do is we need to pass the new title and the new body. So in this case, we're going to do title. And then we're going to do request. So we're going to get this from the form body. And this is going to be dot title. So if you remember, if you look at the form, we added somewhere on the form a name title. So that's how it works. It actually grabs the data from this input. And that's how he knows which one it is. And then we need to do exactly the same for the body. Body and the body is going to be request dot body dot body in this case bodies and then the last thing that we're going to do is we need to put the where method so we don't let everybody update or note so in this case we're going to do where user is request dot user dot id like so and that's pretty much it uh the last thing that we need to do when we update it we need to do res dot redirect and we need to redirect to the dashboard uh, yeah, that looks a little bit weird, but it's fine. And then the last thing I'm going to do is console log the error. Okay, save, everything's up. And now, hopefully, if we go back, 
if we refresh and if we change MongoDB tutorial to one two three, and we change this body text to one two three, and we click update. Okay, we're getting cannot put dashboard item and the item number, and this is simply because. And this is going to be because if we go to the uh, route and then the dashboard route, it's because I've actually put this as post. Now, although post will work if we didn't do all the method put, we do need to change this to put like so, and that should fix the error, hopefully. So if I go back to back like this, and if I put one, two, three, one, two, three, update. And as you can see, MongoDB tutorial one two three. If I click on it, it's all updated. I can remove the one two three, like so, update it, and I can do the same for Morgan. Hello, and then update. And I, as you can see, this updates straight away, and it brings me to the dashboard. Now let's have a look at deleting a note. We've got the delete button here. When we press it, we get the actual drop down menu, and when we press this delete button. I want to create a new route which is going to delete this specific node for this user. So again, let's start from the uh, route here. So what I'm going to do is create a new one. And this one is going to be route delete. And in this case, we want to render item dash delete. And then we pass the ID. Uh, this is going to be called something else. Let's give it a name of update node. So this is going to be dashboard delete node. Cool. And now if you go to the dashboard controller, let's copy this, make sure that this router is dot delete. And now we can scroll down to the bottom and create a new one. And I'm going to copy something and just put delete, delete node. And then inside here, we can start by exports dot dashboard delete. And then we can do async and then we can do the request response and then the function and inside here we can do a try catch super quickly for the catch we're going to do console.log the error and then for the try we're going to do something very similar so we're going to do await note.delete one and then inside here we put the parameters so for example id and then we can do rec.params.id. Let's leave this on one line so you can see a little bit better. And then we can do the where. And we can put the specific user. So where the user is request.user.id. And we are pretty much done. The last thing that we're going to do is res.redirect. And then we're going to do dashboard. Save this. Tidy up a little bit. Save everything. Yep, that's it. So. If we refresh this MongoDB tutorial node, for example, and press delete, we're getting this uh, nice animation. And then if you press delete one more time, nothing happens. Now, this is because we actually need to wire this form. So let's go back to the actual page, which is in this case, dashboard view node, and where we have the model. Now, in order to do a delete one, it's a little bit weird, but if we toggle the world wrap, so the delete button, we're going to have to wrap in a form. So inside here, we're going to do a form. And then we're going to do action. And the action is going to be dashboard. And then item delete. And then we're going to bring the note ID. And then we're going to close EJS like so. After this, we're going to do question mark. And then again, method. And this is going to be equals delete. Like so, and then we're going to do method posting here. And let's give it a class name to make it a little bit better. Position reality. And we need to wrap the button inside this. Okay. And we also need to change the button here from type to button to type submit, otherwise, it won't work. Okay. Save this. And now, if you go back to the browser and we refresh this page, we are looking at the MongoDB tutorial and if I click delete and then if I click delete one more time, you will see that the MongoDB tutorial is now gone and nowhere to be found. And now we don't have much pagination because we don't have enough notes. Okay, now let's focus on adding a new note. 
And because we've already done this page here, we can actually copy most of it and hopefully speed up the process. So first of all, add in the new note, the link will be under dashboard slash add this here. So we're going to have to create the router. Let's go back to our Explorer, find the routers here, and then inside the dashboard, we're going to create one more router. This one is going to be add item. And because I'm doing zoomed in so much, this goes on the line, but that's absolutely fine. And then for the add item, I'm just going to copy this one here. And I'm going to put this is going to be router.get first of all. And then we're going to go dashboard and then add like so. And then we're going to have the login here. And then instead of dashboard, we're going to change this to dashboard add note. And now we need to create this controller. So in dashboard controllers, somewhere at the bottom here, I'm going to paste a comment, which is going to be get add note. And inside here, all we need to do is export dot dashboard, uh, whatever I call it. dashboard add node and then this is going to be an asynchronous function and then we're going to have the request response and then we're going to have a narrow function like so and we're going to just render the add page which is going to be res.render and then inside here we can render dashboard and then we're going to do add like so board by the way with s at the end so dashboard slash add and then comma and then inside here, we don't really need to pass anything except maybe changing the layout. But what I'm going to do is just say layout. And then the layout, I'm going to set it to be dot dot slash views slash layout. And then slash dashboard. Okay, that should be absolutely fine. And now we should potentially see the ad page. But of course, we need to create this ad page. So, so under views. We're going to have dashboard and then we're going to have another page. And in fact, we might get away with uh, copying the view note page. So let's copy the whole thing and we'll just modify a little bit, create a new file and we're just going to call it add.ejs. Like so. And if we, if we paste the whole thing from view note, let's see whether we can modify it super quickly. At the top, we're going to have exactly the same thing, the container, we're going to have a row which is going to display the breadcrumbs with instead of title we can't pass this so we're going to just say add node like so and then and instead of view node we're going to change this to add node and we're going to remove the delete button as we are only going to be adding notes here save this and now the form should be very similar hopefully so instead of dashboard item in here we're just gonna remove everything inside here and just put add so we just want to post the action on dashboard add which we will have to do a post route so in this case we have method to post and everything else the important stuff is that the input has the name and the id the name of title here and the text area has the name of body so we can actually pass the data and submit it to the database so the last thing inside here is instead of having update we're just going to do plus add note and we should save this so the modo as well we don't need so we can just get rid of that code as well and now we should be good to go if i was to save this and if i was to click on the add new page here we'll see that we are getting a problem and this is because i left the ejs on the title and probably the uh, text area so that's why we need the view will wrap and here it is so we don't actually need value inside here and we can just leave the placeholder as it is and the same for the text area we can just leave this as empty but instead we just have a placeholder that says take a note save this and now if we refresh one more time we have failed to look up views layout dashboard let me have a look can't really tell what it is so i'm going to copy the layout from here and just paste it in here so layout what did they do wrong dash dash views layout of uh, i missed the s okay so i've just missed the s in here and if you save this now and if we go back and refresh we should be able to see the page obviously I zoomed in a little and now if we click on add note 
then as you can see we're rendering the ad page we have the title in here and we can take a note as you can see cool now let's make the add note button work and in order to do this we need to make another route so if we go to go to server route dashboard and this route is going to be similar to the one that we just created so router but instead of get we're going to change this to post like so and then we're going to have dashboard add is logged in dashboard controller dashboard instead of dashboard add node unfortunately i call the add node so i'm just going to put submit okay that would do the job and now we need to create this so back into the dashboard controller here we can create another one maybe around here so we're going to do exports dot dashboard add note submit and then i'm going to paste a comma here this is post add note and then this is going to be again an asynchronous function so async request response this is an arrow function and then we put the logic inside here so i'm going to do try catch and then for the catch straight away i'm just going to do console.log and we're going to log the error all we need to do is await and then we do node and then create and then we can put the data that we want to create in this case we're going to do rec.body because when we submit the form this is going to submit the title and the body of our form but also we do need to insert the id of the user that is inserting the node and so what we can do is request dot body dot user and now we can insert the request dot user and then the id of the user just like this hopefully i just removed all the nodes by the way and so hopefully if we go to the dashboard now and if we refresh here you'll see that we don't have any nodes now i remove them one by one but now if i go create node and then if i put a title of hello world testing one two three and then we submit you will see that this is spinning and this is because i'm waiting here but i didn't do a redirect so we do need to redirect or render a page so rest dot redirect and then inside here we need to put dashboard like so so we do need to redirect otherwise it's going to keep on spinning and now if i go back this might have inserted the data let's refresh yeah this has inserted the data but just so we see it so if i refresh this we'll see the data here hello world but let's create a new one and then node.js tutorial this is a this is a node.js tutorial and then i'm going to add a node okay as you can see the latest node that we just added comes first and then we get the other ones after so as you can see we don't have any more pagination and this is because we haven't actually submitted more than 12 nodes and at the moment i believe that those fields are not required themselves but in the database in the model here of nodes we do require the user the title the body and the day created is created automatically and there are two ways of doing this so if you go to the add form here the first and easiest way is to make the input so here it is let's say let's go to world wrap and for example on the text input we can say required and then on the text area we can do the same somewhere around here we can just say required and now if we save this the browser will be smart enough to actually not let us submit anything as you can see please fill this field and it's going to be the same for the other one please fill this field also if you wish to make it a little bit nicer you can use bootstrap you can look into bootstrap validation there will be some examples here with a form if you wish to add them and the other thing that you can do here on the back end so inside here maybe you can check if the body uh, if the request body title and the body uh, body maybe you can look into flash messages where if you submit it it's gonna pop up on the screen and tell the user but these are the things that you can do and for now i'm just gonna leave it as it is and then let's have a look at the last thing that we need to do so first of all let's go back super quickly so we have the node.js tutorial and if i update it one two three 
and click update it's all working and if i wanted to delete the hello world i'm gonna click delete and then delete night the last thing that i'm gonna do is do a search and for this we're gonna need a few nodes so for example let's create a couple of nodes super quickly do that and i'm gonna hide a word in here so for example i'm gonna put batman like that and we're gonna add it and let's see let's add one more i'm gonna copy some content from my blog super quickly paste in here and submit and in fact for this one here i'm gonna add robin so just so we have different words that we can uh, look into okay so i've added a couple of notes in here and now let's have a look at how we can do the search for the search let's go back let's go back to the uh, route and then the dashboard route and inside here is where we're going to put the search so for the search let's copy one of the routes in here and paste it at the bottom maybe and this one is going to be router.get and it's going to be under dashboard and we're just going to put search like so it's logged in and then for the last bit i'm going to do a search and then we need one more because when we we can display the search and we can also submit a search and now this one is going to be for posting so we're going to do post and then dashboard search is fine but instead of dashboard search maybe we can just do submit as well okay let's go to the dashboard let's go back to the partials and then we have the header dashboard here and early in this tutorial we added the search form so if i do world wrap you will see that we have a form the form has a post and then the action goes to dashboard search which is all good we have both of the both of the routes and now we just need to create them okay we minimize everything and just open this one and let's open the dashboard controller everything else can go away and i'm going to copy a comment and this is going to be the uh, get and for this we're going to do the exports dot dashboard search equals async and then inside here we're going to do request response and then we're going to do an arrow function and inside here we're going to do a try catch super quickly and then inside here we're going to do rest.render and then inside here we're going to render the we're going to render the page dashboard and then search which we'll need to create in a second and then comma and then we'll put the options in here so we're going to do search result which we're going to grab from the actual form so i'm going to show you this in a second like that we want this to be empty for now and then i'm going to do layout and then this is going to be dash dot, dot views and then this is going to be layout dashboard and then we should be good to go since we used this layout quite often in here maybe you can make a global variable that you just put in here and leaves at the top and that's absolutely fine so potentially now we can create the search page so if we go to for views dashboard we can create a search page in here new search.ejs and for the search page we can potentially copy some of the uh, dashboard here but in fact i'm just going to copy the container and make my own one so what i'm going to do i'm not going to do anything fancy in here let's just add the container fluid container fluid custom and then close it and then for the search we can do another row so row and then this row is in fact i'm gonna have a few more classes so row row columns two and then row calls large is gonna be five and then get to two get to large three in fact i don't think this is gonna look very nice but we'll see and inside here we're gonna do some ejs so if we get the search result which i'm passing from here and first of all this is going to be empty so if we get search results equals empty we open curly bracket close ejs and then inside here we can do we need to close ejs first of all and inside here we're going to do open ejs search results and then dot for each and then inside here this is going to be a function 
the function is going to have two parameters, which is going to be the node and the index. And then we can close EJS in here. And then inside here, we can actually display the, the node. So we can do h4, let's say, and we can do node.title. And you can do the body as well if you wish. So we could potentially just link this to the actual node. Let me just have a look. So this is going to be dashboard item. Okay. So if we do a link, href, and then we can do dashboard item. And we put the uh, node ID. I think this should be underscore ID. And now we can close the link. And let's see what happens in a second. Uh, we need to close the EJS in here. And then we're going to have an else statement. So where we have if, we're going to have an else. And this is basically going to say if we don't have any results. I'm going to put something like P, no items found. And then we're going to close the EJS in here, the else statement, sorry. And then we should be good to go. And we do need to create the post one as well. So let's grab this and then we can add it around here. So for posting nodes, search for a node. This is going to be exports dashboard search submit async request res and then inside here we're going to put the logic first of all if i save this so it's all working okay so this is going to be a long one this is going to handle the submit for the search and we're going to wrap everything into a quick try catch in here and then for the catch let's just do console.log the error and then for the try, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. So when we submit our form, let's see where it is. First of all, search. Nope. It's going to be inside partials and the header here. So, and one thing that I noticed is that on the header here, we do need to change the link to dashboard. So if you click on the logo, it just goes to dashboard. If that makes sense, instead of going to the actual website, here we go. That works. And now for the search, what I wanted to show you is that we have this name of search term. So this is very important because this is how we're going to pass the data. So we're submitting under dashboard search, but this is the term that we're grabbing. If we go back to the dashboard controller, dashboard search input, we're going to, we're going to have to grab this. So let's say let search term and to grab it, we can do request the body. And then we can do search term. So search term is essentially the input name and that's how we get it. And now if we wanted to remove special characters from the search term, we can do const and then we can do search. No, no special character. And then we're going to do search term like so. And then inside here, we're going to do replace and I'm going to copy and paste a regex is going to help us replace bad characters. Copy this quickly. And then if you wish to, you can, and now hopefully this will filter some bad characters for us and we can do the query. And I found the next example on Stack Overflow on how to make um, sensitive queries. And this one I'm going to explain now. So we're going to do const search results. So we want to get the search results and we're going to Query the database, await, and this is going to be node.find, and then we want to put what we want to find. So this is the tricky bit here. We're going to do dollar sign and then or, and then we're going to do, because I want to search in both the title and the body, we're going to start with the title. And then inside here, we're going to have regex, and then new regex. EXP and inside here we're going to put the search characters. This is going to be the search result without the characters. So we put that inside here and we put I like that. And that should be it. After those two curly brackets, we're going to put a comma and I'm actually going to copy this and change this to the body. And everything else stays the same. I can remove the comma here 
And the last thing that I'm going to do here is we need to only be able to search for results for the user that's logged in. So we're going to do web. And inside here, I'm going to do user request.user.id. And since this is, uh, this is a post, so I'm just going to leave it as it is and close it. We're going to do rest.render. And inside here, we're going to put the dashboard search cover and then equally brackets we're going to just do search results and then i'm also going to change the layout let me copy the layout from here i always make a mistake here it's layout so i'm going to copy this and then we're going to put layout and then views layout dashboard and then we should be good to go let's tidy things up Okay, and now if you go back to the website and if we search for Batman, and as you can see, we get one result, which is the node limited network traffic. And if I click on it, we will see that we have the word Batman in here. And also if I put the Batman with, it's already small letter. So let's put it with big letter. You'll see that this is case sensitive and it's working. And to prove you that it's working, let's say, so we have today, today, and let's do that. Here we go, we get two results. Obviously they don't look very good. I should have styled them a little bit better, but you can do the styling inside the dashboard and the search results. Basically, maybe instead of having it as two columns, I can just remove it like so and just have rows or something. I don't know, let's have a look. Yeah, maybe like do a little bit of space in between them and you should be good to go. Of course, inside here you can do the uh, body as well but the body can be quite long as you know so maybe title is the right way to do it so we only search inside the body here of the nodes but what about the title so the title should work as well i'm going to do http which is here and i'm going to search for it and as you can see we get one result which is good and that's pretty much everything i can think of so if i log out we are back on the home page and then if i log in it logs this in straight away, which is great. If I go to the database, you should be able to see all of the data in here. If I log in with another user, it's going to create another uh, user ID and so on. And if I go to sessions and remove the session from here, so delete it. Now, if I was to refresh here, you'll see that we're getting access denied, which is good and so on so that's pretty much everything from this tutorial there are other things that you can do such as encrypting the notes and make more checks but i think that if we encrypted the notes the search might get a little bit more complex so i was testing the website because sometimes when you add notes too quickly the date stamp is exactly the same and some notes can appear behind the other notes uh, which is not an issue normally you would add a note and it will appear just fine. So last, and we can do one, two, three. And then this should appear as the last note, which is absolutely fine. But one thing that I noticed and I totally forgot about is that when we update a note, we potentially, it depends how you want to do it, of course, but potentially if we update this note here, potentially you might want to have this note to be the first note as it was last updated. Of course, this is personal preference, but if you want to do that it's actually not so bad all you need to do is if you go to the server and then if you go to the models and if we click on the notes inside here where we have created that we can do updated that instead of created we do updated we can leave as default this to be date and the default to be the date now so when we create a note they both get the same uh, default date in here and now this means that every time we update a note for example this update one we actually want to update the updated at value here so in order to do this we're gonna have to find the controller for the update so dashboard controller let's see here we go put update specific note so inside here we are updating the title we're updating the body and we just need to update the updated at, and then we just need to put updated at. And for the updated at, we just put the date now, and that should fix it. 
So now the other thing that we need to do is when we query the nodes inside here, we also want to make sure that the last updated node is at the front. And in order to do this, you can go to the dashboard one. So this was the get dashboard here. Essentially where we have the sort here, we can do instead of created that, we can do updated that. And then we can do the minus one. So we have the latest one. So if we save this and if we update the updated one more time. Oh, here we go. I think that just, I think I was messing around with it earlier. So that's why it probably worked. But uh, let me update, for example, this one here. So what I'm going to do is new, newly updated. This was just updated. And now if I update it, you will see that this now comes to the front here as the latest updated node. And the other thing that I noticed is that if you wanted to delete a node, so for example, this one here, and if I click on the delete button here, we get the model. And I noticed that we can't close it. And for some reason, even in the bootstrap documentation, we just copied and pasted it. But if I go back and find this, so this is the ad page, we're going to go to views, dashboard, view note one. And then if we go down to the model here, uh, so we need to just put data dismiss on the dismiss button to be BS bootstrap. And then we need to do it for the other close button here, which is uh, the close button here. Let me toggle wrap. So you can see, so we have the close button and we just need to say data dash BS and then dismiss. Now, if I refresh and if I click delete, if I click outside the node, that was working anyway. But if I click on the X here, that will work. And if I click on the close button, that would also work. And of course, if I delete the node, the updated node is now gone. And I'm sure that there will be more flows of the design but it's one of them things that you can work on forever that's gonna be pretty much it i hope that you learned something useful consider subscribing to the channel and hopefully i will see you in the next one